Good Monday morning, everyone, on a gorgeous day in Southern California from Torrey Pines South Course as we welcome you to the 33rd playoff in U.S. Open Championship history, the first in the last seven years. Today, the number one player in the world, Tiger Woods, who forced this playoff with a dramatic birdie on the 72nd hole yesterday, looking for his 14th major title and third U.S. Open Championship title. And Rocco Mediate, the 158th ranked player in the world, trying to become the oldest champion in U.S. Open history at the age of 45. We are ready for the announcement on the tee at the first. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the playoff in the 108th United States Open Championship. The playoff is stroke play. The playoff is stroke play over 18 holes. If a playoff results in a tie, play will immediately continue hole by hole. The winner will be our national champion. The players are from Naples, Florida, Rocco Mediate. And from Windermere, Florida, Tiger Woods. The referee will be Mr. Jim Vernon, president of the USGA from Pasadena, California. And Jim Heiler, vice president of the USGA from Raleigh, North Carolina. <laughs> Mr. Mediate has the honor. Play away, please. All right, Dan Hicks, Johnny Miller, our crew here, welcoming you, welcoming you here to this ESPN coverage. You can see Rocco's playoff record, 2 and 0. Oh. He did beat a couple of major champions in Curtis Strange and Steve mm -hmm. Elkington in those playoffs, but uh, Johnny, this is a huge, huge day for Rocco, the big underdog against Tiger. Here he goes, the tough first hole back into the wind. Good looking drive here right down the center, turning a little bit toward the left hand side. Very impressive. He did get in the playoff to just get here into this championship last uh, Monday. A qualifier indeed, and now Tiger Woods, who is trying to reverse a disturbing trend. On his first holes in the first four rounds of this championship, he is plus seven including three double bogeys. But you look at that playoff record and he's still the big favorite. He's hit two quick hooks here and one block. Tiger's third playoff in a major. Obviously perfect record of two and oh. This one cutting up the right hand side going at the bunker. And gets a nice kick out into the fairway. It's good now. Yeah. So both players in the fairway. And Tiger says, finally, I'm in good shape on the opening hole. This is going to be an interesting day. The personable Rocco Mediate against Tiger Woods. Underway in an 18-hole playoff to decide the U.S. Open Championship. ESPN and the United States Golf Association are proud to present this national championship. Today it's live coverage of an 18-hole playoff in the 108th United States Open. No marine layer today as we welcome you back again to Torrey Pines for day five of this championship and a huge crowd has gathered for this Monday morning playoff to see if David can uh, take care of Goliath here, Johnny Miller. Uh, all these playoffs through the years, we mentioned the 33rd in U.S. Open Championship history, but really uh, one of the biggest discrepancies as far as credentials go, it's mm -hmm. Rocco Media looking for major number one, and Tiger Woods, of course, with the knee injury, and he didn't have a lot of time to kind of bounce back from mm -hmm. yesterday's uh, 
18 holes. We'll see what happens today. Well, they're off to good starts, aren't they? Tiger, again, he lipped in that putt on the last hole, and he just lipped in the fairway on number one. So he's had two good little breaks right there. But uh, if you do a tail of the tape a little bit, you'd have to obviously look at Tiger's experience, his 13 majors, the fact that he's the better pressure putter and player. Hits at 320 versus Rocco's basically 283 off the tee. Huge advantage there. The negatives for Tiger a little bit. Uh, the knee, obviously, is a big issue. Uh, bad starts. He's maybe over that now with that drive there, uh, the four doubles. But he won this championship, folks, for one reason only, three eagles. That was the real key. As far as Rocco, he'll hit more fairways. Uh, he won't hit it so far offline when he misses the fairway that he's in the long stuff. Where Tiger misses it in the, where the people have been walking and in the long stuff. That's a big advantage for Rocco. He's limited by the draw off his iron shots and the driver on the right hole locations. Uh, his great attitude, though, might be a huge factor. He just loves this championship more than any other. He is the people's choice, and uh, who knows? Uh, you know, it is a bit of David and Goliath, but Rocco has got nothing to lose. All right, it's going to be interesting to see how the crowds react to Rocco. Is he going to be their favorite as they push along Torrey Pines, Gary Koch, Bob Murphy back out at their tower positions. Roger Malpe is going to be commentating from the course on Tiger Woods. And, of course, Mark Rolfing with Rocco. Jimmy Roberts, we'll be hearing from him in a little bit. And David B. Fay, the executive director of the USGA, with us, as always, at 18. And you saw the reaction a little bit there from Tiger after finally finding the fairway here. Again, three double bogeys to start. It's about time, he says. I found the short grass. <laughs> you know, it, the one advantage that Rocco has, and, and Lee Trevino did it to Jack Nicholas at Marion and yeah. made it so, so much levity that he took Jack out of his game by all the laughing and smiling. That could work in Rocco's favor. Yeah, the little snake on the first tee. Rocco well back at Tiger. 176 yards for Rocco. This one is right. No bear. Not a good shot. He asked it not to bury. And it's okay. Came out of its splash mark. Uh, Rocco's been really good out of the bunker, so good chance to make it up and down there for him. He got it up and down from that bunker yesterday, Johnny. Tiger has gone plus seven in his opening holes in the first four rounds. There it is. Three doubles. The other bogey came at the 10th hole, which was his other start, but that's what he's done at the first hole in this championship. Tiger's got 154 left to the hole here. Just a gentle breeze into his face. It's a birdie opportunity, Rod, for him. It is. The hole's really kind of cut in an accessible place. Really a pretty swing, beautiful tempo. I'm just a little left to the hole. Tiger in good shape. Rocco in the bunker. Opening hole of an 18 hole playoff to decide the national championship. So Rocco out of the bunker at the first. This was just a moment ago. Rocco, who doesn't like to dilly dally around, didn't waste much time getting in that bunker. He's going to have a chance at par, and MetLife Blimp continuing to be with us here the extra day, navigating high above, providing the unique angle of this playoff below. Learn how MetLife can do the same in your life at MetLife.com. Back down on the green at one. Mentioned this was Tiger's third playoff at a major. He beat Bob May in the 2000 PGA Championship, and then he beat Chris DeMarco in the 2005 Masters. But look at the uh, difference here, the way they played the first three holes. Tiger with all those uh, double bogeys and a bogey to start off and, and mediate. And then look at the turnaround, though, that Tiger's turned in, helped by some. Dramatic Eagles and a birdie at the 72nd hole yesterday. So he hasn't really played Tiger like golf, Johnny, again with a knee, but uh, here he is scratching it out good enough to get into this playoff. Yeah, he's off to a great start. That's a uh, big thing, and that's uh, Rocco probably would, in some ways, wish that Tiger was off to the old starts. A little over 20 feet here, we'll break to his right. Too 
close by Geiger standards. So Rocco, did you notice Mark uh, uh, Rolfing when Rocco's sand shot went by the hole? It almost tried to go towards the back of the green. Did you notice that? Yeah, I mean, normally you would think this is a, you know, pretty much a left to right putt, but I think because of where the hole location is, there's not much break. Yeah, I was watching that at the end. It started to go left, and then the last foot and a half actually looked like it went towards Tiger. So I wonder if you, I wonder if you could see that. Probably not much break. No, and the ones that he missed of this length yesterday, Johnny, were all left to riders. He missed three of them. Baco did have some opportunities yesterday from pretty short range about right in here, and he wasn't able to capitalize. This is a very important putt. what I was afraid of. Not even close Rocco but um, he was playing that to go left to right. It didn't he should have been watching it when it went out of the bunker. But it is a deep bunker. <laughs> so a bogey start for Rocco. Tiger still left with a little par putt to clean up. To grab a uh, one shot advantage at the start. How important is it Johnny I mean the. You know. Right away, trailing Tiger after the first hole, it's tough. But Rocco has proved resilient throughout this championship. There have been a number of moments where we thought he might just uh, fade away. Also, we thought Tiger might fade away in this championship as well with the, all the limping around he's done with his knee this week. Although later in the day yesterday, and Roger, you were out there, Tiger seemed to um, feel a little better. Well, he told me later that. Uh, you know he had taken some medication to help you know, dull the pain a little bit and uh, obviously it helped because he was obviously uh, more comfortable as the day went on for the very first time. It got worse as the day went on every other day. Well, he started off yesterday morning. The pain was evident very early. Well that's the advantage of not a sudden death playoff one hole it would already be over folks. So, all right. You heard us talking about Rocco's chances yesterday in the final round. Here are some examples. Johnny, this was a birdie at the third. If any of these go down, it's easy to play the shoulda, woulda, coulda game in golf. That was a par attempt at five. But any of these goes down, Rocco is the U.S. Open champion. Par at six off the mark. Birdie at 13. That was from short range. And then a par at 15 yesterday. And as Mark Rolfing said, every one of those putts were left to right putts. And the one he just missed was a bit of a left to righter, or at least he thought it was a left to righter, Mark Rolfing. And you, you. All right, let's set up the par for a second, and Gary Koch is out there. Well, thank you, Dan. It's a 389 yard par four, the shortest par four on the front nine, a dog leg right. You see fairway bunkers both right and left. Fairway about 26 yards in width. Fairway does slope from left to right. Second shot uh, ever so slightly downhill if you hit it to the uh, plateau in the fairway. The location today in the front right and you can see that slope behind the hole, Johnny. So a little bit of a backstop there. This is a very accessible hole location. It's a good hole location for uh, Rocco Mediate uh, if he can get it in the fairway. and. Uh, Tiger's been struggling on this whole fact he's been hitting him in the front of the green so finally he's got the hole location he's been hitting it to by accident. Well, Tiger if you remember Johnny yesterday hit a driver off this tee uh, put it in the right rough and uh, ended up packing it out onto the green and three putting for a bogey so today uh, a different club selection off the tee. Went a little bit from the right here Gary. The Lakers! Is he going to visit the long going stuff? left? Yes. Just a fine rough left. He might have got into the fairway uh, bunker. No, it's short of the bunker, right? Stay short? Yeah, okay. but it was in the uh, second uh, kind of the primary rough, so it appeared to really uh, settle down in that rough. In a bad angle. Yes, with the hole on the front left. Only good news is he got a hook wind. Rocco next, uh, same club he played yesterday off this tee. Go. 
Is it okay? It must be borderline. It's down the right side, and that's going to sit up okay. Much better angle than Tiger has. Rocco has owned this hole. He's played it in three under par uh, in the four rounds. Well, Rocco's always up for a conversation, and uh, earlier this morning, Jimmy Roberts had a chance to chat with him. All right, so here we are. It's uh, Monday morning, about five minutes before eight. Rocco's uh, warming up, getting ready. How'd you sleep last night? I slept okay. Lots of phone calls. People coming out of the woodwork, but it was great. Um, I slept for a few hours. Uh, we're wearing on fumes today. Yeah. Uh, you said you, you mentioned that you spoke with Paul Azinger. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about what he might have said to you. Well, Zinger and I talk a lot. We've become really good buddies, and he's helped me a lot, and he's done this before. And just liked watching and liked what I was doing. And just kept, he basically said, do the same thing. You know, I'm up against the best in the world, and it's what you want to do. You want to see what you got. And, you know, everybody's expecting me to not win, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see what I do. You are a poker player. Well, I'm, I'm, so, an, I'm an amateur poker player. You're a poker player, but what, what, what would you say your odds are today? Uh, you know, it's hard to say. Um, if he comes out and plays perfect golf today, which he's quite capable of doing, even though we saw there's everyone had trouble on this golf course, it's going to be a, a tough task because it's hard. No one can beat him when he's right on, but you never know. I'm, I'm playing the best golf I've ever played, so that's all I can say. What's your strategy? You're going to talk? You're going to be... I'll gonna... be myself. I'm not changing anything. Um, Tiger and I have talked. We've played a few times, and he'll talk. I'm not going to bother anybody. If he doesn't want to talk, I'll know it. All, right. All the best of luck. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you, guys. No problem. All right, Rocco, who finished 600th back in the 2005 World Series of Poker competition, a competition which featured more than 5,600 players. He's going to need his best uh, poker instincts and poker face today, maybe at times, to get uh, take care of Tiger. I wonder if Paul Isner uh, talked uh, to Rocco about the 93 PGA at Inverness, where, remember, where uh, Zinger went in a playoff with the best player in the world, Greg Norman, and mm -hmm. prevailed. Might have shared a little about the mindset there that pulled it off. Gary, what are your feelings so far? You got, well, you got some gut reactions about this whole day? Yeah, well, the uh, interesting thing to me, Johnny, and uh, you know, there was a quote from Rocco you know, right after he finished yesterday, is that you know I've got nothing left right now. I'm toast. You know, there's nothing in the tank. And he told Jimmy there, you know, I'm running on fumes. Um, it's obviously a very emotional and nerve-wracking time for him. And uh, you know, hopefully he's got <laughs> enough left there to uh, perform well today. But it'll be interesting to see. I want to apologize uh, to the ESPN listeners out there. Uh, apparently, you were not able to hear the interview. We were able to hear Jimmy's interview with Rocco, but uh, it was good. They're all good <laughs> with Rocco. Trust us. No synopsis by you. <laughs> all right, Tiger will be first to play, and uh, Roger the Lie appears to be better uh, than what we first thought. Yeah, not too bad, but it is sitting down enough to the point that I think spinning the ball will be of great difficulty. I would think if he could get this ball on the right side of the green, he would be very pleased. Going a little bit right, trying to get that right side of the green. Okay, short right miss. That's not bad. Not a bad leave. Doesn't look like the greatest lie, though, does it, Gary? Well, it, uh, it certainly yeah. uh, has some grass around right. it, John. That's that thick Kikuya mm -hmm. that you can chunk, and a lot of things can happen. All right, Rocco next. Great angle from the right side. And a very good lie, Gary. I like this spot. 126. He's had some good karma on this hole. This one's headed a little bit right, though. He's been late on both iron shots. That is really a bad shot. Could be tired swings, Johnny, that both of them went right. That is really a bad shot with a short iron. Yeah, that couldn't have been any more than a pitching wedge there, Johnny. That's what, 50 feet right? Uh, yeah, certainly looks it. Ball was, you know, a little bit below his feet, but uh, I agree with you. He seems like he's uh, either holding on a little bit or just a little late in the release. Yeah, he's late there. Got to turn that around. He's got to make Tiger realize, hey, I'm here to play, not to joke around. Well, earlier you might have seen Rocco's record. He showed a graphic uh, how well he has played this hole. In fact, three birdies the last three days. This was Friday. Birdie putt at the second. You see the hole location a little bit further over there on the right side. And then 
in the third round. On Saturday, and then this was his second shot Sunday in the final round yesterday. Good solid thud there. He has played the second hole. This is a beauty. Rocco always has great expressions. <laughs> He's played it better than anyone on the course, Gary. Three under at the second, and now he's working a little harder. Yeah, he certainly uh, will be. And again, so much will depend on the lies on these little shots around the green. Gary, this is a pretty good lie, actually. It's on an upslope, first of all, the ball's sitting pretty cleanly. He's got enough green. I mean, this is one he should be able to execute. Tough stand so on. Expect him to miss that one. All right, how about Tiger's lie, Raj? Uh, not that bad, really. Uh, I guess the biggest danger here is the club gets stuck in the grass, but if that doesn't happen, he has plenty of green to work with. Not a hard chip. I thought it was a chunky lie, and then he sold it awfully deep. He sold it all the way to the ground, Gary. You're supposed to hold that level with the ball, and that's the biggest mistake I see by professional golfers is that right there and by doing that uh, Johnny I'm assuming they uh, hit it on the top of the club and there's no meat there and they come up short earlier we referred to Tigers playoff dominance and it is a pretty incredible record 10 and 1 Arnold Palmer Jack Nicholas Sam Sneed just ahead of him but uh, percentage wise nobody better than Tiger. You see Arnold Palmer on top there. I had a chance to talk to uh, the King earlier today, and of course, uh, he is a big fan of Rocco Mediate. Rocco growing up just uh, down the road from Latrobe, Pennsylvania, and he had a chance to watch Rocco yesterday and told me that, uh, boy, if he would have made some putts, he would have been the champion. But Arnold, unfortunately, not going to be able to watch this playoff today on his way to New York for a function, but uh, he wanted me to wish Rocco good luck for him. In fact, uh, when Mediate was 19 years old, he played his hero Arnold Palmer for the first time. He said he was so nervous he wanted to run away from the first tee because he was having his first uh, play with the king. Roger? Well, he's got his hands full with another king right now, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> now, this is more work than Tiger wanted to leave himself, certainly. Uh, I don't think he could have been pleased with that chip at all. Now this one, Gary, will move a little bit to the right toward the water or stay pretty straight? Well, I, I think it's pretty straight if it's hit firmly, Roger. Got the pull to the right with the ocean. Huh? Mm -hmm. Looks like he wants to go left and a little pull right. Speed up. Just to cap off that story, Gary, by the way, in that first meeting with Arnold Mediate, beat Palmer by a couple of strokes and won about $20. <laughs> Did he take it? I got a feeling he's probably got a frame. Framed, signed and framed. Huh? The good news today, Gary, the greens are flawless, right? Nobody's been out well, there. Yeah, just uh, nobody in front, no traffic. I mean, there's no reason to miss too many putts today, Roger. You would think uh, if they're makeable type putts, they're as smooth as they're going to be, that's for sure. And Johnny, they're also going to be quite quick today. You know, the marine layer that's been in early in the mornings hasn't been here at all this morning yet, so I think they're actually just a little faster than what we've seen. This is going to be a confidence builder if you can make it, Gary. If not, it could be trouble. Just a little bit of right to left break. Safely down, so both players par in the second. It remains even. One over. And 
settled over to the third hole. And our good look here, 188 yards downhill. The hole location today on the, the right side of the green behind the bunker, very important. There you see the flow. So you can hit it left, and in fact, the ball will circle back to the right and go towards the hole. No miss to the left, goes into Barranca. Over the green, goes into Barranca. Importantly, you want to carry the ball on the green. You cannot land in that first little fringe or it, it just spits away right over the back edge and down in the hazard. Bob Murphy, this is really the member's hole location, isn't it? This is as easy as it gets on this hole. That's, uh, that would be my feeling exactly. Your miss certainly should be to the right and or short. If there were any members here. when I <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point. Thank you. Daily V course, just the second daily V course to host this U.S. Open Championship. Roger Mulvey, how's the wind situation? Well, the wind feels like it's coming a little bit from the right and hurting some. Uh, Murph, it's starting to pick up a little bit more breeze now than we felt to like the first hole. And you'd expect it, I think, to pick up a little bit more even yet as the day wears on. Choosing seven iron here. to the hole. Pretty good looking shot, but it comes up short. It looks like it may have buried. It's two straight times, Steve. Wow. It's adjusted. To ah. That is buried. Now that is going to be difficult. It looks to be buried. That's a pretty steep bank there. Heavy sand. Uh, they like to rake so the had... sand up in the morning. We had a lot of helping win the other day when we hit right. the seven, so right. I, I love this one. Alrighty. Got a big opening here. It could be a two-shot swing with a good shot. He's got to respect these right-hand hole locations, though, regardless. And this one will come in from the right, no doubt. Six iron. Get him, Rock! And it is coming in from the right. Tigers. Uh, it'll be interesting when Tiger Roger gets up there to see just how steep that bank is and whether or not lip is a problem with that much berry. How about Rocco in the red and black like Tiger? That's sort of <laughs> the outfit, the black pants and the red shirt. Uh, that's a you, you know, he, he knew that Tiger was going to come out in the red shirt. It's like I'm going to wear what I'm going to wear. I'm going to be who I am. Oh, look at that lie. Roger. It's plugged in there pretty deep. The good news is there's not much of a crater behind it, so you can get the club down in behind the ball and 
pop it up, I think, but uh, still it won't have any spin. Try to go a little bit left into the hill. Popped it out, squeezed it out. I don't think you could play it better than that. Parker's made all threes here. Rocco missed a little birdie putt yesterday here. He plays a push on purpose. He plays it with an open blade. And it just sticks it down in there. Watch this. And it squirts it to the right. It's quite a bit behind it. Could he have played that to the left and circled it around that way uh, and been just as well off or maybe even better off by playing it left? Murph? I actually thought that might be the way he was going. He was open, so open on the shot. A little pressure on Tiger. How about that, Roger Malby? Absolutely. Yeah, that was a big shot Rocco struck right there. Kind of said, I'm not going away. I'm hanging in here. Interesting yesterday, Roger, when Tiger said, you know what? I, I don't want to play off. Let's go at it right now. I want to finish this thing. Stating that he'd rather go into a sudden death playoff than 18 holes. Yeah, he didn't want a one hole sudden death, but maybe right. three or four hole. Terrific thing Tiger does right there. He goes up to the middle of the putt and he holds the putter, of course, above the ground and runs it down what he sees, his eye line sees. That's a great way to read putts. Well, what's it going to do, guys? Well, it's got to move some to this left coming down this hill. I think it just <laughs> has a lot to do with how much speed, but I don't think he wants to get too frisky with this one, does he, Mark? No, that would be my feeling. Pretty fast. The greens have been excellent speed all week, haven't they, Johnny? Yeah, they haven't been out of control. I mean, the whole golf course, the setup was like, you know, like it was like perfect. I mean, it was like USJ just hit it right on the head. When the players are all happy, that's unheard of in the U.S. Open. And yet, one under par won it, the championship. What a combo. some three feet past, hadn't he, Roger? Yeah, I'm not quite that far. I would say about two. Okay. That was quick, Roger. <laughs> yes, it was. He was taking those little, tiny little practice strokes. I thought, man, that must be quick. back in the redesign to bring the Baranka more into play and fourth is a strong hole you can see right along the cliffs a quick hook uh, some of those hooks Tiger's been hitting could go down there uh, into the hazard uh, the right bunker is really into play because guys are afraid of going left to go in the right bunker you can hit the fairway uh, you can see that hole location day way in the back is very dangerous because there's hazard behind the green also and you can see the bounces. The big thing is there's big sideboards here and you can hit here and run it like that. So there is some big help on the right side. Very unusual. It's been added uh, by Reese Jones and uh, you just got to be careful that you don't play a cut in there and double cross and hit a long hook. Yeah. It's a gorgeous view along those cliffs of this fourth hole and that ribbon of fairway making its way along there and the Reese Jones redesigned back some seven years ago. Nice camera work there. That's Beautiful. It's like uh, just a magnificent uh, shot there and it's a great hole. It really is. This hole 
um, is a hole that you got to be careful of, especially off the tee. It sets up great for Rocco. He can hit it just down the right side of the rough line into that slice wind and um, draw it right back into the right side of the fairway. Needs to put pressure on Tiger with those straight tee shots. This one starts down the middle. It's turning just a little left, but he hit it hard. Hang on. That will take a big kick. It's in the rough. It's a good angle, though, for him. Um, he's going to have a hook stance, and he already hits a hook, but the good news is there is a fade of wind. Pole location back right, so a good angle. Tiger with three wood here. A good club for him, I think, on this hole. Might keep that right bunker out of play. E2 hitting a draw. This going up the left side. I don't know if he caught all of that, Roger. You got that flush? It's just behind Rocco there. So both in the rough at the magnificent fourth hole. Torrey Pine South Forest 18 hole playoff continues to decide the U.S. Open Championship. Beautiful view there up on the ledge there, the fourth hole here in this 18 hole playoff continuing. Rocco Mediate, the beneficiary of a two shot swing, is birdie. The Tigers bogey at the third has Giving him the one shot lead, both in the rough here. And it appears Tiger will play first, Roger. Yes. Uh, 228 to the hole, wind against and from the left. The ball's going to be a little bit above his feet and a pretty decent line here, right, Jenny. And it just sets up perfectly for that draw into the right side to utilize that bank and kick it back into the center of the green. I was saying, I don't think he got all of that three with that one nowhere for him. Yeah, you can see this bank here. This is all sideboards here. So you, a guy could hypothetically hit it here and run in here. You can get it here and run it over here. So it really is a very friendly situation. That bank made this hole uh, a lot easier than if it wasn't there. If that would have been a hollow, this would have been a nightmare hole. He's choking way down on something here, John. Got that big side hill lie. That's probably why he's doing that. What is he standing below it five inches? Somewhere in that ballpark. So he wants to hit it at that tower. You can see the hole location, folks. I hope you can. Right there. Playing a little. Oh, got no! Got well, he's overturned it, though. This is not. He's going to miss the gap and maybe catch the bunker. Yeah, stay short of it, I guess. And that is hard to judge the correct distance coming out of that Kikuya rye stuff. Uh, very difficult to get inside of eight feet from there. All right, Mark, uh, what about Rocco's line? He's got a really good line. How that line is, isn't it? Just four yards think ahead of Tiger. I mean, two, 201 front, 226 hole. Well, yeah, I can't, can't carry three. three. You were close to that. Yeah. Right? You're absolutely right. Not out of this stuff. Is that a hybrid? Mark? That is a hybrid, Johnny. He better be a good club. Uh, he better hope he doesn't hit it a uh, gore with a hook. I can tell you that. It could be down in the bushes. This one is very high. Hey, Headed to the over there. right corner. Oh, it's going to be good. Yeah, he knew what he was doing. He just smoothed it. Did you see that little? You don't think of a guy sort of just cozy and oh, hybrid, but oh. it's very good. Backs who set these bit. pins? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Rocco, who set <laughs> these pins? That would be well, Mike Davis really and company. Good, right? that was well, you hear Rocco. He is entertaining, and we know that we had some technical difficulties earlier when uh, Jimmy Roberts interviewed them. So interviewed him. So we're going to run that again for you here. All right, so here we are. It's uh, Monday morning, about five minutes before eight. Rocco's uh, warming up, getting ready. How'd you sleep last night? I slept okay. Lots of phone calls. People coming out of the woodwork, but it was great. Um, I slept for a few hours. Uh, we're running on fumes today. Yeah. Uh, you said you, you mentioned that you spoke with Paul Azinger. Mm -hmm. 
Tell me a little bit about what he might have said to you. Well, Zinger and I talk a lot. We've become really good buddies, and he's helped me a lot, and he's done this before. And just liked watching and liked what I was doing and just kept, he basically said, do the same thing. You know, I'm up against the best in the world, and it's what you want to do. You want to see what you got. And, you know, everybody's expecting me to not win, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see what I do. You are a poker player. Well, I'm, a, I'm, so, an, I'm an amateur poker player. You're a poker player, but what, what, what would you say your odds are today? Uh, you know, it's hard to say. Um, if he comes out and plays perfect golf today, which he's quite capable of doing, even though we saw there's everyone had trouble on this golf course, it's going to be a, a tough task because it's hard. No one can beat him when he's right on, but you never know. I'm, I'm playing the best golf I've ever played, so that's all I can say. What's your strategy? You going to talk? You going to be? I'll be myself. I'm not changing anything. Um, Tiger and I've talked. We've played a few times, and he'll talk. I'm not going to bother anybody. If he doesn't want to talk, I'll know it. All right. All the best of luck. Thanks Thank for stopping by. Thank you guys. No problem. So there you have it, Rocco, saying he's playing the best yeah. golf he's ever played. Five PGA Tour yeah, wins for Rocco. The first came in 1991 when he beat Curtis Strange in a playoff at Doral. That same year, Tiger Woods won the World Junior title here at Torrey Pines at the age of 15. And Tiger away here with his third. Roger. Drawing a pretty decent lie, really, he has. Uh, the issue is there's kind of a ridge in the green separating left and right hand sides that he has to contend with and I think it's going to kick it a little bit right uh, when it gets onto the green. Oh, how about this shot? He took it further right and used his left off the right. So Tiger's going to scratch out a par here. That was a beauty. Rocco, you heard Jimmy talk about his poker expertise. He calls himself a single digit poker player. But again, a qualifier who survived. 11 guys for seven spots just to get into this championship. Took on a bunch of kids who drove it some 50 yards past him. But Rocco emerged with a spot and here he is against Tiger Woods for all the marbles. Not an easy putt here, Johnny. This is really three putts in one. It's a little bit slow at first going up the hill. Like Big right break to the left right, right in the middle of the putt and it goes back yeah, down. Quite above it though. Yeah. And it actually comes it. back yeah. up to the hole a little bit at the end. Remember hitting this putt. Okay. She I swings. think he'd be happy to get swing it as up. close as Tiger's chip. He's had good pace on his putts all week. talking to him earlier this week and I said what happened to long putter he said well at Harbor Town earlier this year not enough putts were going in so all of a sudden he went back to the conventional uh, length putter and he's had it ever since it's got this saber tooth putter that's uh, seems he seems to like it he I haven't seen him take one yeah. yippy stroke I haven't seen anything jump off the face there's no signs of any nerves he's had just two three putts the whole week you know, Johnny, he could not have gone back to the short putter a couple of years ago because of his back. But it's since his back has been, you know, fixed and healed, he's been able to go to the short putter. That ball went in. That could have been a 360 lip out, Roger or Mark. It's in now. And on they go to the fifth, and Rocco holding on to a one shot advantage over Tiger with a nifty up and down from the rough along the cliffs of the south course. Rocco started off with a bogey, got in a one stroke hold, and then the two shot swing at the third with Rocco's birdie and Tiger's bogey. Both par this hole, and this is how. Rocco parred the fourth. 
<laughs> that did catch a lot of edge on the left, didn't it? Well, it's a par four, 453 yards. Another slight dog leg from left to right. Fairway bunkers both right and left hand sides. Fairway just 24 yards in width, so a little narrow. If you can put it in the fairway, though, it is a birdie opportunity. In fact, uh, more birdies made on this hole throughout the championship than any other par four on the front nine. There were 69 recorded. A lot of players hit this fairway, Gary. Yeah, it's surprising, Johnny. The most hit fairway on the front nine, uh, over 64%. This one started well right. Draw more. Keep coming. for it to draw more, but gonna that's happen. not going to be a good spot there. Big advantage over these uh, next few holes, five through nine for Tiger Woods. He's played those in six under. Rocco Mediate in plus two. Rocco's reliable driver is proving unreliable. Yeah, that was a similar swing to what we saw earlier, wasn't it, Johnny? Uh, late on the release. <laughs> it looks like Tiger's waiting on the blimp to get out of the way. <laughs> Has Stevie yelled at it yet? <laughs> well, it was flying so low. I mean, it was right behind the hole. You couldn't help but be bothered by it. Is that a TIO, the blimp, David? I don't know. <laughs> he says yes. Position nicely is Tiger Woods at the par four fifth. Rocco Mediate with the one stroke lead. Oh, He's found the right rough. Will it cause him some problems? Stay with us. And no matter how this 18 hole playoff concludes, uh, this championship has provided us us with some of the greatest images uh, I can remember in U.S. Open history, of course, with Tiger with all those long, dramatic putts to give himself a spot in this playoff and the Africa Rocco Mediate, who's just plain fun to watch play. Well, as Phil Mickelson said, San Diego has done itself proud with this um, golf course and just everything about this week has been terrific. Here's a man, Rocco Mediate, has, who has called the week, Danny, a total dream. I mean, this guy missed eight of the first ten cuts that he played in tournaments on the PGA Tour. And to find himself in this position, what a turnaround. There's no doubt. He fully appreciates the moment, and we touched on it yesterday, that Rocco actually appreciates being right here with Tiger. I mean, he thinks this is the best thing in the world, being with Tiger. Yeah, you just went 182. Mm -hmm. Those ones, the things are soft, but uh, I like how it's holding. Yeah. Well, Tigers left himself 169 yards to the hole. The hole cut on just six paces in that front right. When coming from the right, maybe a little bit of help in it, and kind of a downhill side hill line, a little below his feet here, Jenny. Yeah, Steve Williams said just hold it a little bit into that wind, which means he got a hook wind and he wants to play a little cut to just keep it from drifting left. Only negative to that is if you don't hold it, then you go long left. And he certainly has the lie that will help him hit that kind of uh, shot shape with the ball a little below his feet. You see where he's aiming, aiming left. I'm trying to do the helicopter oh. follow through oh. cut. It's not moving as much as he wanted. It's kind of holding his line left of the hole. That was a little slope there, though, Rox. It should have come up toward the hole location. So, not bad. Pretty smart, Gary. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, mediate ready with his yeah, second shot. And Johnny, you talked about I think about you his can, but I like it left of the flag. Usually reliable driver. He's only hit one of four fairways now. This right to left. 
needs to get this one up quickly over the lip. He's got 157. Pretty much has to forget about the whole location. It's hard to hit a flush out of the sand. Wow. Coming out left. Oh. Way left. Oh, oh hit the path. Hard path. Hard path. Again. Again. Again path. Oh. What a bad break. Where the heck is that? That's on the third hole, isn't it? Oh, that's somewhere, somewhere over toward the third tee, I would think, John. Yeah. Look here, there's, uh, well, you can clearly see how fluffy the sand is, Johnny. You were talking about difficult to make good contact. His feet were slipping all over. If we show those feet the footwork again, that was the problem. Yeah, that's the key in a fairway bunker. You got to keep that lower body steady. He did not. Rocco Mediate in trouble at the fifth. We'll be right back. Well, let's take a look at this shot uh, by Rocco Media. Gary? Yeah, well, let's focus on his right foot, Johnny. I know you mentioned that the left foot did a little something funny uh, at the top of his swing, and I think what happens there, you see the right foot slip away from the target and then try to come back up real quickly. Uh, you know, just too much lower body action for a, a yeah. fairway bunker shot. Best thing to do is take Throw one more club so you can be more quiet. Please we're back in the green. And his third shot now, Mark Rolfing. Uh, I, I, I actually think the, the two bounces on the path helped him because he doesn't have to come over the bunker now. He does not carry a 60 degree sandwich. This is a 56. Pretty good lie. Back into the wind. Yeah, but he's got to land it on a down slope. Can he stop it? Can he stop it? That's a heck of a shot. It's coming back. Yeah, it's leaking its way back toward the hole, so. Wow. Pretty good recovery there. They're pulling for Rocco big time, Gary. Got to ask Mark and Roger both huge crowds. I mean, we've done some U.S. Open playoffs before, but uh, I don't ever remember this many people out. Well, now you can see them lining the fairways ahead of play yes. just to get a vantage. You know, it's it's uh, it, let's put it this way: it's much larger than the one we had at Southern Hills in 01. I'll promise you that. Uh, what's happened to the Tiger? <laughs> what's happened to the workforce here on this Monday in San Diego? Well, they're kind of <laughs> laid back out here anyway, Dan. That's so. right. Uh, Mark Brooks and Rakeef Goosen don't equate uh, the Q rating doesn't quite equate to Tiger and Rocco. All right, so uh, potential for another two shot swing. And this one in Tiger's favor. It's a slice putt here, Gary. It is right. A little bit downhill. Bit of time trying to get uh, focused on this one. He certainly has putted the ball beautifully all week, though, hasn't he, Johnny? I mean, just a number of putts away from the hole. He's just got such a perfect putting stroke, he rarely pushes it or pulls it. that water though you always got to say how quick is it going to be would this be uh, quite the uh, uh, this would be the classic no. match play exchange wouldn't it if uh, Rocco were to somehow make it and Tiger miss yes I don't think Tiger will miss but this could go in right here this is Sort of a no hitter here, Mark Rolfing on this hole, except for that third shot. And that was a beauty. Yeah, it was a really good shot. I think one of the reasons, Johnny, why he's better on his right to left putts is because that's his long game pattern. I think when you play right to left all the time, you're going to be a better putter on right to left putts. That's a good point. I like that. He 
was asked Mark about his good putting this week and, and Rocco said well you know it, it's really nothing technical I haven't changed anything and it's all a focus on making the ball go where you want it to go and this is a big advantage to do what he's doing right there and of course with nobody behind him he can go in the bunkers all day long if he wants huh, Gary yeah that's very true just past 10 o'clock on the East Coast or actually 10 o'clock here on the West Coast just past one o'clock out there and 18 hole playoff continues here Rocco uh, got in a hole early bogey the first two shots swing in the third with Rocco's birdie and Tiger's bogey so Rocco trying to hang on here to a one shot lead looks pretty good is it firm enough is it firm enough Don't you? I mean, you know what he is feeling. Yeah, he's a fun guy to watch. This is a very compelling um, argument of who's the most popular uh, between these two, and that usually isn't the case when Tiger's in the picture. Usually, he's the most popular. There's a lot of people, everyday kind of guys, uh, public course players that look at Rocco and they say, you know, that's that's a great story. I got to pull for him. Tiger for his par four. Yeah, they should have one movement to the left hand, but I would imagine they'll hit it firmly. They shouldn't do a whole lot. All right. So both players now at plus one. Five holes. And a look at Tiger's early card here shows you five consecutive fours to start out this uh, opening nine in the playoff. So much has happened with Tiger with all those eagles and everything. We can't forget what he pulled off on his second nine on Friday, the front nine at Torrey Pine South here. Birdie three at the first, birdie three at the second. So Tiger was putting all threes on the card. Hard the third with another three, so three straight threes, four straight threes with that birdie at the fourth. And he concluded a stretch here with five straight threes on the card, a part of that blistering. Final nine 30 for Tiger, which was capped off with a birdie at the par five ninth. And that equaled his lowest nine in uh, major championship history for Tiger Woods as we set up the long par four six a converted par five Johnny tees up about 14 yards today just a little over 500. It's the longest par four in US Open history one yard longer than the ninth at Wingfoot converted to from a five to a four ranked number two this week uh, just 16 birdies and uh, it's a very fair hole because it plays down and across on the wind or just left to right on the wind. You can run the ball up. It's got an open front, but the green is a par five green, and it's got tremendous. It's got a tremendous amount of movement, so that's the toughest part. That's why it's ranked number two, is because the green is really difficult. But this whole location is another fairly friendly one, so um, the course has been set up where the players with a good shot can make birdie today. It's not a big defensive par fest. All right, so we are all square. Plus one. Tiger and Rocco through the first five holes. Rocco with a couple of bogeys in the birdie, and Tiger with all pars in the bogey at the third. I think it's important to note that the course was already set up prior to the championship. So, I mean, the tees, everything was decided pretty much. Some of the tees were probably flexible, but the whole locations, all that was done prior to the championship. It's not like, well, they, they biased anything, it was done. Well, Johnny Mike Davis told me that uh, he had his four favorite hole locations which he used Thursday through Sunday mm -hmm. and his fifth favorite is the one that was set aside for the playoff. Well, there you go. It's fair today. If you get a good shot you can get it close. Like Rocco is almost hole in one at number three. Tiger's got the driver out. A 
again worth noting we have not seen some of those early grimaces of pain that we've seen from Tiger in the first uh, few rounds. He's hit more good drives on this hole than any hole besides number nine. He just he's carved that fade on this hole perfectly. Same with number nine. He's creamed it in number nine well over 320. That's probably why he's played these holes so well. And Rocco has had a little bit of difficulty here. He's been well back. He had 247 into the hole from the fairway one day. Well, he's hitting a hook into a slice wind, and that eats up yardage. Good job, Rocco. Thank you. Here. That was a well hit, both of those. You see the difference in distance between Rocco and Tiger? It's a as, different zip code. As Tiger would put it, you could build a Walmart in between them. But Rocco scratching and clawing even with the number one player in the world at Torrey Pines. Tiger's name going to be on that trophy for the third time or will Rocco be on it for the first time in U.S. Open history. They are even here through the first five holes as they play the sixth. Rocco with a lot longer second shot coming up here to this par four. Just the sixth qualifier. We do have a little bit of help here. To win five last or four? 49 I US Open. I think it's four. You sure? Well, we've been carrying five. We've been carrying five, just about 85. And here is the distance between Rocco and Tiger, some 23 yards. Rocco did pretty well if he's just 23 behind him. <laughs> Ranked some 175th in <laughs> driving distance. It's a good hole. Yeah, just hold easier than this for him. Past it is dead. You're right. I think we just hit a good spot. Yeah, but can I hit 200 yards? That's the question. I don't know. I don't know if he can hit a five iron 200 yards. He's not sure. Okay. In front of these greens, they're pretty good. There is a tongue there that will roll back, though. Johnny, here's the problem for Rocco right now. He didn't get the ball over this bridge in the center of the fairway just like yesterday. Uh -huh. So he's got a hanging line. He had trouble with it yesterday. Left it short and right. It's a good hole location for him, though, isn't it? Left side. But it's going right again. Leave it. Boy, plenty of length there. Well, sitting in the, the cut that's not so long, uh, chipping back into the wind. The wind is what definitely the wrong club. I totally agree with you. Yeah. I mean, if you hit 160 yard eight on it, we've got 170 eight on it. Tiger's got 185 to the hole here, Johnny. With the hole cut down that low area in the left, if he can shape a draw, get it 20 feet right at the horse, so it'll want to feed down over there by where the hole is. I agree. Is this an eight iron? I think I heard Steve Williams yes. say. Yes. Just a smooth little trap draw. Wind is behind. Oh, that's a hard one. He's hit it very high, and he's shaping it right to that, but this is just right of the hole. How about stiff? What a shot. Wow, that's a beauty. That thing was painted right down the flag stick. Well, if you're just joining us and want a little taste of what has happened so far, some quick highlights through the first five holes, and at the very first hole, Rocco had this for par, hit his second shot of the bunker. And so Tiger had a one shot lead with his par at the first. And then things changed big time at the third. This was Tiger's tee shot at this 188 yard par three down the hill and watch where this lands. Yeah, he's trying to feed it in off that left bank and he's watching it looks pretty darn good, but misjudges the wind and buries under the lip of the bunker. So Tiger would make a bogey in the meantime, Rocco.
put a thrill through the crowd with his tee shot with a six iron. Big six, six iron, plays it out to the right, rides that into the wind and to the left. Looking good. Watch the kick off for the spin. Oh! So a birdie for Mediate and a bogey for Woods. Two shot swing and Rocco had the lead by one. But Tiger scrambling at the par four fifth, his third. Had a weak tee shot with a three wood and then uh, tried to hit a little runner second shot and pulled it. And what a good touch hit that he's shown here. So Tiger able to save par. Rocco kept his one shot lead as they went to the fifth, but Rocco out of the bunker. This is a dangerous shot and his left foot slipped on the back wow. swing, his right foot slipped on the fall through. And watch what happens here, folks. One cart paddle. Two card pass. And it looks like he's in big trouble, maybe looking at a double bogey. Actually had a decent line over there, was able to get a bogey five, but Tiger parted, and that's how they have pulled even here through the first five holes. But Tiger with a big advantage as they play the six has a very good look at Birdie. And uh, what about Rocco Mediate, Mark? Well, I would call it a decent lie, but it's certainly not an easy shot. Um, he has walked up to the hole pretty much I think to get a feel of how much downhill it is in the middle. I feel like the first part the thing is the first part goes down that way and then it starts to curl down there. But the important thing is to get it's on one level it's got to hit down to the second level on Mark. It does and it's got two breaks to it Johnny it'll go left at first and then I think straighten out and maybe even go back to the right at the end. You guys on your TVs can see a little light mark right in this area here. That's the top of the hill. Then it, it goes to the left, then it goes right at the end. Did he catch it? I don't know. Sounds a little chunky, but I think he might have just barely might made have gotten it. lucky. Yeah, it's going to go way right now. He has a different look route. at this by Rocco. He didn't need to go that far left, but he, he did it. <laughs> A shot at par. Wow, uh, it's another one of those uh, match play situations that uh, if Tiger doesn't make his birdie putt and Rocco were to make his, that would be good. He could go right at the hole, but for some reason he played it way left, and of course it goes left until you get to right about there. Now it just feeds down into that hollow. <laughs> Look at him, I like the head. <laughs> It's actually that was a terrific shot. I thought he might have caught it a little chunky, but uh, it was maybe a chunk and run. All right. What about Tiger's birdie try, Raj? Well, it's got to move a little bit left, and it's a little bit downhill. I'm almost surprised that the ball would stop on this slope short of the hole, John. You would thought it would have fed past the hole, especially downwind. But he did take that huge swing and just really nuked it, and that puts more spin. Tiger looking for his first birdie of this 18-hole playoff. Yeah, it's a perfectly played hole. He has driven it just flawlessly on this hole, Roger. It's the best we've really seen him look uh, this week, I think. Certainly at the start of any round. And, no what, and what about walking, Roger? Uh, he, he, he just seems to be uh, feeling better today. He I think seems, he seems to be comfortable. Don't you think he learned something from maybe taking a little meds uh, at the halfway mark yesterday? And I think he probably he knew it was going to hurt today and uh, just sort of he had to have it. I mean, can took play a little earlier. Yeah, <laughs> wait for. The I don't turn. know. He, he did that, advance. folks. I'm just I, we don't speculate. Know, I would assume he did. Clean it outside right. a one shot lead. He just doesn't miss those putts. That, that's why he's Tiger Woods. Other guys they make it and you get all excited. Wow I made it and for him it's hey it was in before I hit it. Plays it well outside right just feeds it in there. Makes it look easy Roger. And the putter is just so square just 
longest hole, par four in U.S. Open history, and he just uh, hits a drive in a nine iron and uh, makes an easy three. Well, this to minimize the damage. If he misses, he'll fall two behind. Is this another little one of those left to right putts uh, that Rocco's been having some problems with, Mark? Pretty yeah, straight. there's not much to it actually. Pretty straight, right in the fall line, I think. That was an important putt. Very nice by Rocco. Yeah, that was a very impressive up and down. So they head to the par four seventh. Rocco down by one. And let's set up that uh, par four, Murph. Seventh hole, dog leg right. 463 yards. That bunker's been a lot of trouble this week. Most of the misses are in that bunker. You see the fairway slopes left to right. It's a narrow fairway right in there, about 23 yards wide. And then back down slightly to the green and the whole location on the front left today. And wind, what's it doing, Murph? Wind's coming from the player's right uh, slightly into his face. Definitely Certainly on the, on the second, second shot. shot yes. Yeah. And a fairly easy hole location, huh? Yes, it is. Uh, you don't want to go long and left because you'll be down in that swale and that would be a difficult pitch from there. Tigers made one birdie on the hole and see Tiger hit three of five and Rocco two of five. That's a switch from the rest of the week. If Rocco wants to win this playoff, he's going to have to change the, what he's been doing on the driver. Nice. Right. Hey, just quiet in the grandstand, please. Thank you. Tiger missed it a couple of times to the left and Play that same cut he just hit off number six. That'd be perfect here, Johnny. Yeah, we're just sitting on the other side of this hole, our tower uh, on 18. And there is a little bit of wind, maybe 10 miles an hour. Coming from the west. He likes it. Yeah, good looking tee shot here and there. Oh, dead center on her. Is that center or what? <laughs> Might be one yard off, Johnny. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it was, he didn't even have to watch it. Rocco, a man of motion when he hits. He's always moving. It's very relaxing that way. You don't get stiff and still and you get tight. It keeps moving, moving, moving. Creeps into the intermediate rough, but a good line. Well, we've got ourselves a genuine battle going on here at the playoff, and we'll be back to the U.S. Open Championship playoff in just a moment. Sure has been a joy to spend some time here in Southern California. Just the second U.S. Open Championship in Southern California. The last 1948 when Ben Hogan put it away at Riviera. We're at the seventh hole and Tiger with a one shot advantage. Bob. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Rocco said yesterday, I can't believe I have this opportunity. And um, I like that attitude. Not that at 76. Means that he's hole. considering any exactly no that. Help in this this green's been landing fairly soft too all week. I like this. He's got 176. Murph to the hole, a terrific lie. It's almost like it's teed up on a par three here. So actually, a pretty good chance for Rocco. Put it out there to the right a bit. Draw it in there nicely. Over there. Come on. This one is not turning oh. left. So oh. Leaving the face a little open all day on those irons, doesn't he, Mark? Yeah, not a bad oh, shot. Oh. <laughs> Tiger now, Roger. Yeah, this one's really kind of a green light now, 145 to the hole. This is yeah, a I mean, pretty I mean, opportunity I mean, here. 
On that when the green's soft, I, I don't think nine's the play. When it's 46 to the hole, the first hole was 152. I'm not saying you can't get it there, I'm just questioning. I like this half the slide. Okay. Steve gives final instructions and information. Steve was questioning whether that's enough club, but I think Tiger is playing this club, uh, Roger, because it's a downhill while and will keep it down into that wind a little more. Put it a little bit. That's been, he's playing a draw. And it's drawing in just right of the hole. Yeah, good looking shot. Very nice. Excellent position right under the hole. The A game is coming out, guys. That's a green light birdie putt there. Well, it has been six years since Tiger's last U.S. Open win at Beth Page back in 2002. A look at his major breakdown there. So this U.S. Open championship has been the most difficult for him to pile up victories in. But with a win here, Tiger will match Jack Nicklaus in winning all four majors at least three times. Well, he really got in this playoff because of the knee with the C game. The big difference was that for the three Eagles, if he didn't have those, he would have been tied for 13th after yesterday. So that those three holes did it. Very true. Amazing what Eagles do in a U.S. Open, and they have had to set up such that a lot of guys could reach the par fives, especially, and make Eagles. Then number 14 playing as a short four. Had a couple of Eagles there yesterday. Rocco doing his walk around. What do you see, Mark Rolfing? Well, I see a putt that's going to work left, definitely, Murph. It's a little bit down the hill. And it is quite a scene out here right now, Bob. I'll tell you, I, I would think by the end of the day, this could be the biggest crowd ever to watch two guys play golf. Well, I'm out on the 13th, actually, and they're still pouring in the gate over here. San Diego is just loving this opportunity to see the United States Open Championship on their course. Four birdie. Just ever so slightly. It's two out of three holes. He put it right in the heart and came up short. Surprised him. He didn't think it was going to be short. I have a feeling that pars are not quite as wonderful today, Murph. Uh, there's a lot of birdie hole locations if you drive it in the fairway, and uh, greens are perfect. You know, that's the big difference. Is uh, you know, normally you're not going to lose much ground with pars, but I think right now the way Tiger looks, uh, you know, you're going to have to make some. Rock is going to have to make some birdies to keep pace. Yeah, I think so, Roger. You're right there, but Tiger's animation seems to be. Much better today than it was all day yesterday. Well, absolutely. And if we can work off the assumption that he's uh, taking some uh, medication for pain, as he did yesterday, they're not prescriptive pain uh, uh, medications. They are over the counter. You know, anything you could buy in a pharmacy. So he's he's just trying to dull it, take the edge off it, and apparently it's worked because he seems far more comfortable today than he has any other day out here. Yeah, he took those medications somewhere in the middle of the round, and it really helped uh, the back nine yesterday. Yeah. This is a comfortable-looking putt here. This is not a hard-looking putt uphill. I don't think it does much. Go a little left, maybe. Made one birdie here on Saturday. Now, two shot difference. Another look at the putter head swinging through. Totally on balance, no movement. Does not, going. Does not move that head, does he, Mark? No, he's that going about well his, 
Going about his business, he is. Johnny, what about the next hole? Par 3 8, 171. That's a riser up to the green, isn't it, Dan? I think it's uh, 22 feet or so from yeah. the team ground to the green. A little semi blind as the player looks at it. You got sort of back forge there for Tiger. He can hit it up into those yellow markers and have it roll right back down next to the hole. So you could. You could see conceivably something come close here. We Rocker almost made a hole in one at number three. Not saying this is a hole in one hole, but uh, it, uh, it's a doable shot right here. Again, this is uh, the entrance. The only part of the green from the tee that you can see the bottom of the hole is this one. So this is definitely visually the easiest spot, isn't it, guys? You guys are down there. See, Tiger starting to put the steam to it. You know, shot lead, biggest by any player so far. He's had some amazing finishes in the San Diego Open, winning it the last four years in a row, including this year by eight shots. So many good memories here. I mean, it's just like I'm getting the feeling that uh, he's getting in that groove. You know, he's been playing just because of the knee, very mediocre golf, but hanging in there. And now all of a sudden, I can feel that he's going into that zone of good golf. He's got eight iron here with that hole right in the front right corner. He's had several eight irons. I think this is the third one. I think he won maybe on, was it one? And he hit one on six. And now he's got another one on eight. What do you have in the last hole? He just hit a wedge. Yeah, wedge last there. Time. Yeah, wedge there. Rocco said to me on the last green when he walked up, he said, so I had a six iron and Tiger had a wedge. No big deal, right? When you're playing someone, you always have to focus on your strengths and not the other guy's advantage. He has switched to a seven iron now. So it must be between clubs. What do you think he'll hit then instead of that, Roger? Or I think he'll try to hit a little cut up there, yeah. Kind of crossed it over. It's going a little left. Rolling too, huh? One hop buried. Does come out? Nope. That's one of those one hop spin berries, and that was a huge miss club. I don't know where he came up with switching from an eight. It was just a soft eight iron. Cheers of support for Rocco, as if to say, "Come on, Rocco, take advantage of this." Tiger miscue. I tell you, Tiger shot it. He could miss the green from there half the time. Is it helping me enough? For this I mean, ball? you can't hardly hit the green from there. Well, up the hill, it's still play seven. This is when your well, caddy raises say, I Rocco, know, you have a big right. opening exactly. here. You it's almost made a hole in one on number switched. three. Do it again. This might be uh, the most beautiful start to a morning out here on the West Coast. Just uh, approaching 1040 in the morning here, 108th U.S. Open Championship. In its first 18 hole playoff in seven years, and Tiger in a predicament at the eighth. Tough to hit the green from here. Call that, Johnny. He's going to be hitting again, I think. Well, it's about a tie. So, could be another big swing here. Snoopy three providing the great views of this championship from high above. And Rocco doesn't waste much time getting in his second. Yeah. A little farther past than he wanted, and I know that. Maybe he was trying to make another two, but. Leaves himself a downhill quick one. At 158th in the world golf rankings, Rocco Mediate is trying to become that lowest ranked player to win this championship since the rankings were established in 
1986. Not That's how many. big of an underdog he is. I don't know how many guys qualified on a Monday and had to play in a playoff to get here and now is playing at Tiger Woods. Let's put it that way. And Tiger's third. Similar chip shots, looks like. A little left for bogey for Tiger. Broncos got a par putt upcoming. Well, it's just a one shot difference technically between them now. In fact, the only uh, lower ranked players that mediate to win a major in the 87 that have been played since they were established Ben Curtis, and that's Cinderella first major ever in the 03 British Open. John Daly, 91 PGA. Sean McKeel. PGA Championship in 03 and Paul Laurie at the 99 British Open. So you are watching one of the biggest underdogs in the history of this championship try to put away the game's biggest force. Roger. Yeah, John, this uh, this little putt I wouldn't think would do much here. But uh, he just had nothing with his second shot. I mean, there was really no way to keep that ball on the green at all. Yeah, so I figured. Is he putting first because uh, Rock will be standing in his line, or is he away? I, I, I'm behind the green, John, so I, yeah. I can't tell. That could be the issue, though. Certainly, they're in that kind of proximity. Yeah, the course played pretty tough this week. Uh, players were only 1,737 um, over par. Of course, average was 74.7, and just 53 rounds under par for the week. Majority of his putts go in dead center. That means you've not only got a perfect stroke with perfect speed, you've read it perfectly. So, I mean, when you see guys pouring them in the middle, that means they're doing a lot of things right. Johnny, this one has to go in the middle because with the pace it'll be carrying, if it hits either edge, I think it would lip out and go well by. So, it has to be made in the middle from up here. You don't get a lot of openings from Tiger. And uh, you do not want to walk off the screen two um, strokes higher than uh, Tiger. You want to pick one up right here. So he needs to get this in. Just a slightly different angle than Tiger's. I think he needs to go inside right with this. It's not an easy putt. I mean, under pressure. Just one as they get ready to make the turn here, heading over to the par five ninth. <laughs> Rocco is hanging in there. In a pressure packed environment. Let's set up that par five, Gary. Well, at 612 yards, Dan, it will be the longest of the three par fives the players will play today. Tee shot is downhill. You can see uh, 300 plus yards into this range to those fairway bunkers. Uh, Tiger has driven the ball beautifully here and has utilized his length. He has made three birdies in the four times that he's played the hole. Rocco Mediate yet to make a birdie here at number nine. And the hole location over on the front right today. And we speak of those birdies. Third shot, Gary. This was on Thursday. Packing it out of the rough. Was over there in two. And so Tiger, who has just feasted on par fives his entire career, and then on Friday, this was the birdie at the ninth, which capped off that sizzling 30, which began with five straight threes, the birdie four there. And then yesterday, this was his second at the par five. 
It's a beautiful, towering iron shot here after a drive well over 320 yards. And another two putt birdie there for Tiger. And he has played the par fives uh, this week in nine under par, in contrast to Rocco, who's uh, just two under par on the par fives. We talked about Gary, how Tiger just uh, eats up par fives and championships. Uh, 38 under on par fives in U.S. Opens. And the one time he parred this hole, he three putted from the front fringe. Yeah, I mean, he, he was, was in very good shape. We were thinking he was going to make eagle, yeah, remember, right, or at least exactly. I was. Yeah, and he ran it about four or five feet by and missed it coming back. So he has dominated this hole, especially with the driver. The driver has been the key. And Rocco's struggled with the driver in this hole. Shots today on Tiger on the three pars, and he's still one down, if you want to call it that. One down, one stroke behind. Well, the, to me, the wind has switched direction just a little bit. It feels like it's starting to come a little bit more out of the southwest, so it almost feels like it has a little hurting component to it right now. This ball will be hurting. Oh. First premise. That doesn't mean it's not a good shot, folks. First one he went at a little harder, too, Johnny. Okay, left center. Well, let's take another look at the uh, swing, John. Perfect good. position there, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful. Right on the right in the slot. Just great. And he snaps that up. See that up move? It just puts so much torque. Uh, in that knee area. See where he grimaces, Gary. That'll come about right now. Yeah, he's, he said it is definitely after impact. I mean, it, it's not hurting before he makes contact with the ball, but there's a man that uh, obviously is in pain. But he's up by one. We'll be back to the U.S. Open playoff. Back at the par five ninth, Rocco Mediate will be uh, just trying to lay the ball into good position, yep, I would assume, Mark. Absolutely, Gary. Try and get his uh, good yardage for the third. Maybe hug the left hand side of the fairway if he can. Important shot, need to hit the fairway. Hit it. Going a little bit right. Amazing how many times, Mark, you see even good players kind of get a little lackadaisical on layup shots. Well, it's a hard lap. Well, there's a pattern there of those right irons. Right iron. That's about the fifth one today, Johnny. Just he's leaving that face open. He's not firing the right side like he's always done. He's always been a right-sided player. Yeah. Iron shot right at one, two, six, seven, eight, and now at nine. Nine distance. Tiger at 325 yards, so 30 yards longer than mediate. This looks like five wood city here. Is that what it is? Well, he's got 280 to the front, 287 oh. hole. The hole's playing uh, probably it hit his drives a good 25 yards past this the last couple of days. So the wind uh, definitely a little bit of hurt from the right. So maybe a three wood? I would think. That's a long three wood. I know I couldn't hit it that far. He's got a lot of ways to hit this to get it there. He could play a cut. He could play the draw, Gary. Interesting to see the shape that he takes because he's been having trouble cutting this club. This is hooked left, heading at the bunker. Oh. All right, with the hole cut over on the right hand side. He's got some room. He didn't seem too daunted by the whole thing, did he? Well, I think that's where he felt like if he was going to miss, that's where he needed to be. Certainly don't want to short side it right. Well, it has been a while since Tiger uh, won that uh, last PGA Tour victory in dramatic fashion at Bay Hill, but it uh, pulled him into a tie with the great Ben Hogan with that 24 footer on the 72nd hole at Bay Hill. And then Tiger went on to play the Masters, did not play in the players because of the knee surgery, which occurred just a couple of days after the final round of the Masters. 
And so uh, not teeing it up and not walking a full 18 holes until arriving here at this U.S. Open Championship. Some two months after the Masters, there's the early card for Tiger, the early bogey at the third, and then those two consecutive birdies at six and seven before another miscue bogey at the eighth. Wasn't Thursday the first time he walked 18 holes? I think in yes, practice it was. he just won nine yep. holes. He never did test it. He never walked 18 holes before the first round here. And a look at Rocco's card. Got in the hole early there with a bogey at the first. And there was that two shot swing at the third with his birdie. His bogey at the fifth and trailing by one. Well, you can see. Uh, John got disgust on his face here, not being able to put this layup shot in the fairway. Yeah, there's not much excuse for it. I wonder what he's thinking. Uh, I wonder if he's seeing this pattern that's developing that he's not squaring up the club face at impact. He's just leaving that left hand with the face open. He's not letting the right side close it up and play the draw. Mark, they're not. He's not hitting draws. They're just going out to the right and staying yeah, there. He's starting them on his line, Johnny. But as you said, he's not firing through it. It's not turning but over. Anything that lands around front edge, though, right now, out of that should be all right. You like this, or can you get? Can way? you get a good 105 out of that? I don't know. I think I like the other one. I don't like swinging hard with those weapons. What's total? 18? Total is 8. Oh, okay. I can get this. I think it's well, going to a 52 it's degree too, wedge here. Uh, it's got right to the left of the hole. A little bit. Okay. Yeah, I like this, this one a lot better. to land it short. This is going to be a 120 yard club. What would you think, Gary? 18 hole. Well, 52 degree wedge, Johnny. Probably 115. So he's going to have to take something off of it. Spin. I think that he could have gone with the other one, even in front of the hole. All right, approaching the top of the hour, and that's where we will do the switch over to NBC Sports. So just a few more minutes left in this initial nine hole coverage of this 18 hole playoff in the U.S. Open. So get ready to switch over to your NBC station for the final nine and the conclusion of this championship. All right, Tiger with his third. Roger. Well, on a bit of a downhill slope here, of course, the green running away. Uh, difficult shot. He might want to take this on a little further left line than normal. Give him more room at any rate. Club a little deep, Johnny into the sand, and move how slow he hit that. Yeah. Yeah, Roger said it was a little bit of a downhill live. It's not too often you see him hit two bunker shots in two holes and not Hold hit the green. Hold up behind the green, please. Thank you. Playing his fourth. Roger, this grass seems to be very sticky. It is very thick in there. And of course, I couldn't get over to see exactly how the ball sitting with this grass. Uh, very dense on the slope just out of the bucket. Bob Costas at Torrey Pines in San Diego. 18 hole playoff for the U.S. Open Championship. Tiger Woods for par at number nine to maintain a one stroke lead over the 158th ranked player in the world. Rocco Mediate was holding his own, obviously dead even with Tiger through 72 holes yesterday, bringing them back out here for the full 18 hole playoff. Not sudden death or just a few holes on Sunday like at every other golf event just about, but a full 18 holes. This is mediate for par to stay one back and he does not find the cup. So now as they prepare to make the turn through nine holes, Rocco mediates Cinderella story 
in a great deal of jeopardy, trailing the greatest player on the planet by two strokes now through four holes of this playoff. Mediate did lead by a stroke, but obviously there has been a swing, and now, as they head for the back nine, it's Tiger by two. A nearly perfect afternoon in San Diego, Torrey Pines Golf Course. Large galleries, even though they could not have anticipated a playoff today. And Rocco Mediate, who has not won on tour in six years and is hoping to become, uh, here we are, hi everybody, Bob Costas, soon to be joined by Dan Hicks and Johnny Miller and the rest of the crew, Rocco Mediate, has not won in some 138 starts, has not won in six years, the 158th ranked player in the world. He has won only five times on tour in his entire career against Tiger Woods, bidding for his 14th major. Woods, as most of you know, recently had his left knee surgically repaired, so it's been difficult for him. He has often played through clenched teeth, and he had to drain a very tough birdie putt on the 18th yesterday to force this playoff by a matter of a fraction of an inch as that putt kind of lipped around the cup. Rocco Mediate saw the championship perhaps slip away, forced to come out and play 18 head-to-head -head against Tiger Woods today. Now let's turn it over to Dan Hicks and Johnny Miller. Dan. Thank you, Bob. And uh, it looked like it was going to be at least a one-shot swing in Rocco's direction. But a bogey for him. He's trailing by two. The par 4 tenth, 414 yards. This is a birdie hole if the guys can get it in the fairway, and he does not like it. And it's uh, going right, John. Yeah, he's leaked it right, and it's gone down into that Kakuya grass, and that's going to be a tough, tough shot from there. And uh, it's not the way we want to open our show with that uh, little reaction to that shot. But sorry about that. Go, go, go! Again, the biggest lead by any golfer has been Tiger's two shot lead where it stands right now. And, and he regroup. needs to regroup here, Johnny, because that was a little bit of a nervous stroke there at nine. He, he misread it clearly, but uh, he also pushed it, never touched the hole. He's only hit three fairways. That's the big thing, and there's four greens out of nine. And that's a good looking swing. That's the first swing that actually had the Rocco rhythm. And the first ball that's turned over from right to left. Yeah, that was the, the rhythm that we've been watching all week, and he's been real staccato and jerky before that. So Rocco trailing by two has the advantage at the 10th. NBC Sports and the United States Golf Association are proud to present a national championship Today it's live 18 hole playoff coverage of the 108th United States Open. You heard Bob mention the weather an absolute gorgeous late morning here on the West Coast just after two o'clock out east and after a couple of prime time tiger like uh, performances over the weekend still trying to decide this championship just about 90 miles away from where Tiger Woods grew up in Cypress, California. So he's got plenty of his supporters here, but so does Rocco Mediate, personable 45-year-old player who is trying to become the oldest U.S. Open champion in history. Last one six years ago and is in control here on this hole at the moment at the 10th. Dan Hicks, Johnny Miller, our entire crew here, Roger Malpe down there on the course, Mark Rolfing as well. Jimmy Roberts, we'll hear from him a little bit later on. And there is Rocco from Greensburg, Pennsylvania, just down the road from where his hero Arnold Palmer grew up. And there is the early car on Rocco. Started off with that you got 39. Bogey, birdied the third. He's had swings go in his direction on the two par three so far. It's Tiger here who is playing first out of the rough. Roger. This lie is awful. That is all he could do is hack it down the fairway. And you can imagine with a short iron that Tiger Woods can hardly get it there halfway. Give you an idea how tough some Kikuya lies can be. Uh, that was probably the worst lie I've seen close to the fairway in the whole championship by anyone. There's those bogeys by Tiger at both the par threes, the third and the eighth, sandwiched around the consecutive birdies at six and seven. And then the unlikely it's swing in little, his I mean, direction at the ninth when it looked like Rocco okay. was going to cut into that lead. 
Tiger has thrown Rocco a bit of a bone with the bogey like at eight and way. no birdie at nine, though. And then and now looking like he might make bogey at ten. So, not. you know, Johnny, Rocco has got his game face 41. on right now 44 after that bogey. Total. I don't think he plays his best golf with that kind of a face. He plays better with more of a happy face. Well, this is a definite birdie opportunity. He needs to get it right now. Maybe a two-shot swing. This one is very high, and he released it. He cut it a little right, though. Oh. Ah. Bad spot. Ah. Getting a lot of tweeners, as we say on tour. A lot of clubs that are not right. Like nine was a tweener. Ten's another one of them. He's getting between clubs. And if you've been with us uh, all championship week long, you've uh, gotten the sense of how big a victory this would be for Rocco Mediate. And Johnny, I guess you were talking to some folks <laughs> in the in the stands here behind us, uh, mm -hmm. uh, behind the 18th green. There was folks that got here pretty early in the morning. They got still a long wait before this group gets to them. They just love their golf here in San Diego. There were guys in the stands at 6 a.m., folks, and they don't get to see one shot till about 1.30. So it's just amazing. These biggest galleries for a playoff in golf history, I would think. And uh, it's just fantastic. You've got two guys that are so compelling. Uh, Rocco is such oh, a Cinderella story and a people's choice, and then the great Tiger Woods. So, and they're, you know, right after this hole, this hole could be a big swing right here. Rocco could chip in. He's got a very makeable chip. And, Tiger's got a tough up and in for par. All right, so Mark Rolfing covering Rocco, and Roger is down there with Tiger. And Tiger's ball has come to rest right on the edge of the fairway with kind of a taller first cut just to the right of his ball, 69 yards to the hole, hole cut on just five paces. So I would imagine this ball's going in just in front of the green. Did you see Tiger's reaction when he saw the, uh, the lie he had on the drive? Yeah, well, it was horrible. I don't blame him for having that reaction. Took it in a little deeper than I thought it would. Well, that's a lot of spin from that distance again on the ball. Wow. This Kikuya grass, the ball just sits so beautifully in the fairways that you can just hit any shot you want and put any amount of spin if you if you you know contact it correctly. So beautiful fairways. The course is in great shape. All right, you've already heard from our walkers on the ground out on the towers, Gary Cope and Bob Murphy. Roger with Tiger, Mark with Rocco, and Jimmy Roberts will be handling the interviews. David B. Fay with us as always, executive director of the United States Golf Association. And you try to put in perspective what this win would be for a guy like Rocco Mediate. And we'll be expanding on this if necessary, if Rocco is able to put this away and beat Tiger Woods. but. Really only the 1913 U.S. Open with Francis Wimet won, which was just an incredible U.S. Open. And then you can point to Jack Fleck and the win over Ben Hogan in 1955. Other than that, this might rank up there <laughs> as the third maybe biggest shocker in U.S. Open history. A lot of golf left, though, as Rocco's in front of this 10th green with his third. Very Got a man. fairly lofted club, Johnny. I'm not sure that was the best choice. That was just a flat shunt from a perfect fly. You know, these guys have only hit four greens out of ten tries, both of them just four out of ten. So the open pressure is probably getting to him a little bit. Even Tiger's not, he had that good run there where he birdied the, you know, those two great holes in a row. He birdied number six and seven and looked like he was off to the races. All right, the tail of the tape and this is what we're talking about in this David Goliath David and Goliath battle Tiger who tied Ben Hogan with that 64th victory at Bay Hill earlier Rocco hasn't won in six years total of five hasn't won a major four top tens in major and he's 158th ranked player in the world tail of the tape is big time in Tiger's direction. Why, it's such a wonderful opening for Rocco, wasn't it there, where Tiger hit it in two, um, and uh, Rocco missed clubs on the second shot again, two holes in a row, and then chunks the chip. Uh, uh, Mark, that's, you just can't do that against a guy like Tiger. You, when he gives you an opening, you have got to snatch it up. Like that. Yeah, that's about 18 feet, you know. Uphill a little bit.
more than 20,000 people on this Monday in La Jolla, California, cramming around just two players on this golf course. And they're still pouring in the gates. Genius by Tiger. It's another one of those putts that could have been a violent lip out to the right. And somehow that ball just dove in on the pro side. I thought it was going to be a violent lip out to the right. And it looks like it's going to miss. Oh, just eats it up. That's the advantage of being on the high side. And Tiger, who has fired the crowd up here on more than one occasion along the course of Tory Pines, gets him out of their seats again. How many long? Huts and big moments have we seen from Tiger in this championship already three Eagles from long range and the birdie putt yesterday a 12 footer that forced us uh, into this playoff today. So this is a big one for Rocco to try to match Tiger. No Tiger's got a three shot lead that putt by Tiger was a backbreaker four holes in a row, row now Tiger is hold nice putt. And when he gets that putter rolling, nobody can touch him. And the greens, uh, folks, if you just tuned in, are magnificent because nobody's been on them. They've been rolled, double cut and rolled, and uh, they're just flawless right now. So if you're putting well, you can make them. The Rock is shocked right now. Tiger is pulling away a little bit. How can you drop a shot where Tiger wasn't too? After he made that putt for par, Tiger looking over at Stevie saying it was a big one. Another one. All right, let's set up the next hole. 192 yard par 311. Difficult hole. In fact, the most difficult par three for this championship. Uh, the reason why is it plays uh, the wind is, is almost always this way and the green is extremely narrow here. When you have a downhill hole into the wind, the ball has so much time to come down. By the time it gets on the ground, it's offline into that wind. Well, this was where Tiger seized control of the championship yesterday. It was 217 down the hill. This was a three iron. Yeah, it looked borderline again, uh, sort of a lip in and watch what happens. There's a hill behind the hole. Looks like just an OK shot almost stops and says I'm going down to the hole. And Tiger would make that birdie to take the outright lead in the championship. Coming into that final round yesterday he had never squandered a 54 hole lead in a major championship trying to keep the record intact, tacked and win it in an 18 hole playoff. Rocco's got to get back to the, what he does well. That's hit fairways and greens, and uh, four out of ten is not going to get it against Tiger Woods. Uh, this is a very narrow opening here, Roger, but uh, the wind is what, six, eight, ten miles an hour? Yeah, I would say uh, probably about ten miles an hour, and almost directly at the players right now. Downhill, Tiger's got five iron here, John. So the wind's coming out of the southwest now, west, southwest. Big swings, though, in this uh, playoff. Of on the par threes have gone in Rocco's direction. The Tiger hasn't hit a shot on the three par, but this one the guy's saying it's going straight. The guy it's going a little bit left. There we go. Just again, that could bury into the lip again. He did that on number three and he buried it on number eight. Now maybe he's buried it again on 11. So three pars are like got to be upsetting. That, that came close to being a good shot. If that was another couple feet, it would have done what it did yesterday. Kicked right, rolled right, and been a good one. Listen to the crowd. They're trying to Coming encourage good, Rocco to yeah. look at the gallery of this hole. No, I like this just, it's like the 18th hole. Well, Rocco had a good look at Tiger's shot. The wind just knocked it right out of the air. Opening for Rocco needs it. Three behind. Should be a four iron for Rocco. Right, going back left. This looks good.
second shot for Tiger at 11. Now the ball's sitting down again. Three buried lies, and uh, Rocco has um, picked up three shots on him and, and counting, possibly. The atmosphere does take a, a bit of a dive in these 18-hole uh, playoffs at U.S. Open, and naturally, quite naturally, uh, people go to work, and it's a Monday, but uh, this is an incredibly impressive show of people here in San Diego and at Torrey Pines for these guys. This is more than 20,000, and that may swell to even a lot more than that by the time they reach the 18th. Might have taken a business holiday overnight, guys, in right. San Diego area. Big opportunity for Rocco here, Mark. Well, he really needs to forget, Dan, about playing against Tiger Woods, I think, because Tiger's given him openings. He hasn't taken advantage. He needs to play the course. Okay, he's going to get his par and hope that Tiger's uh, incredible par-saving powers take a pull off here. Somebody needs to make putts against Tiger. Somebody's going to come along and start making the putts the Tiger makes. Tiger's got 12 putts through uh, 10 holes, and Rocco's got 17. All right, this is up ahead at the par 4 12th, where they've uh, been settling in for a few hours now. Up ahead at 13, the par 5. They're craning their necks over the back to try to get a glimpse of the action at 11. This is the 14th hole, which is going to be exciting. It's up today. The tees short and reachable at 269 yards. So the folks at 14 are waiting. And Johnny, these are some of the folks yeah. that have waited as long as 6 a.m. who yeah. are in their seats. Yeah, that's my good friend Steve Pinero there, my duck hunting friend. <laughs> <laughs> it is an amazing atmosphere. Back over at 11, see if Tiger can uh, keep his three-shot lead. You know, has a putt here that will work from right to left after his third visit to a bunker in the last four holes. They have not been good to him. Didn't get either of those up and down. I think this putter has made any putts in his day, Raj. Just unbelievable the amount of money this particular club has made. Especially same. big putts. Yeah, the same model of putter. So many players, uh, you know, pick and choose and abandon the putter. Tiger's gone for the same one his entire career. Well, like Jack Nicholas, remember? This time, Rocco's going to dodge one of those Tiger par savers, cut into the lead, trails by two. As Tiger picks up his third bogey in the first 11 holes. We're starting to hear encouraging Rocco Rocco uh, comments from the gallery, which is nice. They've been very polite to Tiger. They, everybody loves Tiger, but uh, that's a big thing now. Two shots is a whole lot different than three. On to the 12th, Johnny. The yep. longest par four in U.S. Open history. Maybe the longest in playing. It is. It plays the longest of any par four ever in an open. You see 280 that bunker there. Fairway is yeah, 26, 27 yards wide, but it's uphill. You get no roll off the tee shot, and you're playing into the wind uh, coming from uh, today. It's a little bit crossing from left to right, but it plays into the wind. The green is not a real tough green. There is a shelf right there. You can see the back left is a super hard spot to get to, but uh, today it's a four might pick up a shot for Rocco. If he can put it in the fairway here, because I'm not sure Tiger can hit this fairway. Rocco on the tee first. Yeah! This one is very high in the air, so it won't carry too far, the but should be okay. Johnny, the swing looks a little freer. It's like, uh, you know, after the bogey at 10, he said, hey, I got nothing to lose. Let's just go for it. He went back, like I said, to the Rocco rhythm where he rocks back and he rocks back into it. The Tiger has struggled a little bit here at the 12th hole. He is. Uh, Made a couple of bogeys. Do you go ahead and rip it, uh, Gary, and hurt your knee, or do you just swing within yourself? You know, it'll be interesting to see if he'll, you know, can go with the smoother swing. He's hit some good shots when he's done that. When he swung hard, he doesn't hit the fairway. Tiger! Might be right. Well, this one going up the right-hand side, extreme right-hand side. It's going to 
find the fairway bunker. So, Rocco Mediate picks up a stroke at the 11th. Tiger in the fairway bunker. Rocco down the fairway. The difference is two. Stay with us in the playoff for the U.S. Open. Got it in the fairway, although a long way from the hole, Mark Rolfing. 243 yards. Wind has changed directions, Gary. It's coming a little more from well, the left right now. Well, that was he like killed this one. Impressive swing there. They said he murdered it. What a shot. Look at this. What a shot. Only 15 birdies recorded on this. Difficult power four throughout the four rounds of the championship, and Rocco's got a legitimate chance there. That shot he's hit all day except for number three, where he almost made a hole in one. And Gary, just a quarter of the field reaching this green in regulation during championship week. All right, now Tiger Woods, Roger. Well, he's got 208 to the hole, Gary, and at that decent angle, but has to get the ball up a little on the quick side it over the lip in front of him. Uh, if he hits it thin, it could be an issue. But I think the hardest part is going to be getting the ball launched as high as I think he's going to have to hit it and get the ball back to the hole. He's missed four straight greens in regulation. A couple over par the last four. That's two easy holes he didn't take advantage of. God damn it! Uh, he's hit it way up in the air. Obviously didn't like it. That's a similar shot to what he hit out of the fairway bunker on 18 yesterday. He said he got the toe into the sand deep and just kind of hit a high floater out to the right. Who knows? Tiger's lead could be wiped out at the 12. Here's what's been happening today in this playoff. Rocco, we mentioned the par threes and how they have turned in his direction. This was his tee shot. Tiger's tee shot buried in the bunker just in front of the lip. And Rocco nearly aced it. What a shot. So there was a two-shot swing there with Rocco's birdie and Tiger's bogey, and they were separated by just one. But Tiger hanging in there, beautiful up and down here, Johnny, at the fourth. Yeah, he has to come up over that ridge after a poor drive and a poor second and makes it up with a short game, which is a la Tiger stuff. So Tiger maintained his one-shot lead, but then Rocco had his problems with his second at the fifth. Watch where this one bounces. And both wow. feet slipped. Watch this, folks. Uh, right on the cart path, one cart path. Two cart path. And that leads to, uh, could have darn near made a par. He had a phenomenal third shot. Yeah, it could have been worse than a bogey, so they were tied at that point. Tiger's second at the next, the par four sixth. And what a shot this was. Just painted it right at the flag stick. It bites unexpectedly, but he goes on to make that putt. And he took the lead by one over Rocco. And then at the next hole, birdie try at the seventh after a beautiful approach. A great drive, a great second, and looks like Tiger's A game has kicked into gear. You know, there's no stopping him, and he buries it in the bunker again, like the third hole, par three. And then, but Rocco, and then this spot here, we just popped up forward, and Rocco makes bogey here. Yep, so it looked like the swing was going to go big time in Rocco's direction, and he was trailing by two, and then Tiger for par at the 10th. Rocco for his par at the same hole, so another swing in Tiger's direction. That gave Tiger the three-shot lead until Tiger's bogey at the 11th, and now the lead has been cut to two, but Tiger is up against it here at this long par 4 12th, Gary. Well, he is indeed. Uh, you can see the back hole location up over a little rise in the green up on a shelf. Has just hit How four about of 12 greens in regulation. That is incredible. He has five fewer putts, though, than Rocco, and that's the difference. That's yeah. Tiger Woods, isn't it? The putter is, has been his ally, and it's uh, the big difference. You know, everybody talks about his distance and his physique and his swing and the charisma and all the shots he has, but it's been chipping and especially putting, pressure putting, that set him apart in the world of golf for a long time now. All right, Roger, tell us about this one. Got a pretty good lie, and obviously a lot of green to work with, and it's going to work uphill. Uh, the ball gets onto the green. He's pitching directly into the wind, so he may try to throw it about a little over halfway to the hole, maybe get the ball to bounce once or twice and check. Hey. 
But I just don't think he carried the ball anywhere near as far as he wanted to. Did you see a heel grab Gary? When yeah, I did, John. It sounded the contact didn't sound particularly good, did it? No, that, that's the problem in chipping at the hosel of the club's got a lot of resistance and that grass grabs it. Well, a golden opportunity here for Marco Mediate to uh, make up some ground. But you never know a tiger to carry. <laughs> well, you don't. That's for sure. But I mean, this is a legitimate birdie putt. Not the easiest putt to read, Gary, that I've seen. Uh, at first, I thought it was going left, uh, which the back of the green typically would tilt toward the front. But uh, when I got behind the hole, it didn't look like there was a whole lot to me. What's the longest putt he's made? Five feet so far? Uh, I don't know if he's even made a five footer. Maybe three and a half or four, John. You got to make some putts against Tiger. You got to show him that you can make those pressure putts in these situations. Uh, to scare him just a little bit or get some respect. Well, he got that happy face on again after hitting the second shot here at 12, and I like seeing that. He thought it was a better shot actually than the one he hit at three. Is it going to turn? No. Wow. What a putt. <laughs> U.S. Open is the only major championship to use an 18 hole playoff. The Masters uses sudden death. British Open and PGA with a three or four hole aggregate playoff. And so that has been the format for the U.S. Open. They have stuck with it, although the U.S. Women's Open has changed from that traditional 18 hole playoff through the years, and now they have gone. To that other three or four hole. Well, if Rocco get. doesn't win, and he could say, "Well, if they had that British Open playoff, I was one up after four. I'd have been the <laughs> Open champion." And as we've seen so often, Roger, he will take some time and make sure he is 100% committed to the read. And I enjoyed so much, uh, Gary, what he said yesterday after uh, he hold that final putt at 18. All he was concerned with is doing his part of the job, going through his routine, making a good stroke. If he did that, then whatever happened after that point, so be it. Pretty good way to do it if you can commit to your putting that way. Yeah, stick to the process. And will it in. Tell you what, he wills him in the hole. Look at that. He's into this putt big time. Eight bogeys. No. No. It was uh, not his best effort, so at best. Two. Well, Tiger's trying to help Rocco. He's plus three the last five holes, and a couple of them were birdie holes. Certainly giving him some chances. Well, I'd like to see Rocco slow it down just a little bit on the greens, Johnny and Gary. I, I thought on that first putt, he hit it pretty quickly, even quick for him. His 
routine. One practice stroke from behind. Step in. Get settled. Okay. So mediate for the par. And just one behind. With two holes in a row, Gary, that anything can happen. You said anything? Well, we've seen about everything from Tiger Woods. Starting on Friday, second shot by Wood off the hill to this par five. And that would produce the first eagle of the championship for Tiger as he made this putt coming back for the eagle three. But that wasn't even close to the theater on Saturday. The second with a five iron after he hit it well right. He was five back at the time. The ball came bounding by the stick. And some 65 feet away, just on the collar. And Johnny, I remember you telling me when he hit that second shot, you were talking eagle, and I thought you were crazy at the time. <laughs> I thought it would change the course of the championship. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> And a surge into the San Diego galleries. That was the wildest, loudest roar you will ever hear on the golf course. And of course, he made another eagle to close things out to take the lead uh, for the 54 holes. So Tiger with three eagles in this U.S. Open so far, and uh, they're at the 13th. Bob Murphy, 539 yards, Dan. So it is reachable, certainly by Tiger. I would think Rocco could reach it too. He can turn it over and the wind will help carry it. Right. Just made three consecutive really good swings at 11 and 12. This one may be turning just a little too much. Oh, oh, I can't tell. A nice little well, bounce though. Can't quite tell where it she might be. We take a good look at the hole driving across the ravine down to that person, particular place there, and then. Do you lay it up down short or do you come at the green? The green grid shows us you got two plateaus left and right and the balls will collect down into the center and or to the front and if you leave it short it goes down the hill. Tiger on Friday at that that the eagle he made he drove it over the concession stand to the right. Big advantage for Tiger if he can hit the fairway. Sort of see the open club on, face, yard. trying to cut it, trying to oh. get it to come back. One yard, he said. He didn't get it. It's only a couple inches long right there, though. Well, it is a hole that has produced a lot of excitement this week. Tiger Woods, one shot up on Rocco Media. Welcome back to this 18-hole uh, playoff, 108th U.S. Open Championship continuing, and our coverage on NBC Sports continuing as well on a Monday afternoon, quarter to three or so out east, just approaching the noon hour here as Tiger Woods, who had a three-shot lead after the 10th hole, now finds himself leading by just one over Rocco Mediate, who could be one of the more uh, intriguing underdog stories in golf history. Yesterday at the par 5 13th, not everything good has happened here for Tiger. This was Lee Westwood playing in that final group of Tiger yesterday. Westwood was just a couple off the lead, and he drilled a three wood into the ice plant. And then Tiger Woods, just after that, Johnny, and this was a shot that you were very critical of. Well, I just didn't see what he was going to do. He couldn't reach the green, and there's so much trouble down there. And he hits it over that uh, Torrey Pine into an unplayable spot. He could not hit the ball from there, so he had to take a penalty drop. And both Westwood and Tiger made bogey. You know, he was hurting. Remember, he was really having trouble with his leg at that point. And for him to go at it that hard, I just didn't see he was gaining that much, Bob Murphy. He, he could have just put it down there in front of the bunkers well, yesterday. I, I certainly agree. Last and we I, were 242 I it right away. And I will say that Lee Westwood think, said in the paper this morning he was sickening right not at. to be in the playoff, like said, but uh, he can go back to that shot. 
kicking for it sure. in that front Not anything else. Um, I don't think so. The other one's gone, isn't it? I think it is. All right, let me hit this. All right. He's got a shot of 261 yards, Murph, but the key for me here for Rocco is to get the ball up in the air, get some height so the wind can push it. It's right at his max. It's uphill, it plays long. You know, it's some helping wind. Hit he good. hit it plenty yeah, high. Oh, Needed a couple oh. more yards. Oh. Lacked a couple of yards. Not a hard bunker shot from there, however. Wow. Back to Tiger. And what's that lie look like, Roger? It is perfect. And I think on its last little Same hop, it just kind of propped down. up. And it uh, yeah. has 223 yeah, I mean, in the whole I mean, tool. It, five, it, it plays its length. Yep. Yeah. Steve Williams final. It don't plays for its one length. minute think you can take it. And you know, favor that big tree. Because that's where the green and that hill is, where it'll, you know, it's softer there. Yeah. Like I said, don't think you can take anything off that. I do that. One tiger. If there's any doubt in your mind that they know exactly what they can do and want to do, it sure gets eliminated as you watch them play and listen to them. Well, it's uphill, which is playing longer, and it's downwind, and the two, according to Steve Williams, equalize each other so just playing the yardage nothing more nothing less he's a par five killer he's hit it way way up in the air a little bit right of the hole it's a very nice very soft bounce there or Murph is it time for another eagle <laughs> Very nearly the position he was in when he held it down on the front. We'll be back. Don't go away. Welcome back. Rocco Mediate in the front bunker. Tiger on the back of the green, right of the hole. Rocco's got a good lie here, Bob. This is not a hard bunker shot. And he's actually a pretty good bunker player, so. I wouldn't think he should have much trouble with this one. It should be within three or four feet on average. Good time to type it right in there now. Don't give Tiger any leeway. Came out a bit left to what he expected, but that's very makeable. 13's a place to be, isn't it, Murph, this week? <laughs> It certainly is. 13 has been exciting and take another look at Tiger's shot coming into the green and the difference is that ball is sitting right up on top of the, the rough, which was the intention of the USGA, that intermediate cut. Give a guy a chance. Boy, he took advantage of it. Hit it right into the slope, left to right, kicks it right back in the back of the green. I must say that on that eagle on Saturday when he made it all the way from the very back, very nearly where he is right now. That was the loudest roar I think I've ever heard. And Tiger said, I just went nuts. <laughs> he said, normally I don't do that. I'm, I'm uh, not going crazy after I make a putt, but that one they did. I might have to question that one. I should go a little crazy after he's <laughs> some putts. <laughs> yeah, play now this low area. Love the green earth come up. Part of putt uphill across a ridge, it should swing to his left, certainly, as it does that. And then level out when it gets on the uh, left plateau. How far out, Murph? Well, I would guess uh, probably as much as a couple of feet. Depends on the speed, doesn't it, Johnny? And we would expect him to get it to the hole. So, as Roger said, it'll be dying when he gets up there to less three, four feet. It keeps turning.
And Mark Rolfe, you had a look at the break here. Well, I have. Uh, <laughs> I think it's one of those inside left putts, Bob. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's really pretty straight. It's interesting on the bunker shot. He hit it perfect distance, but just pulled it a little bit. That's what got him over here on the left hand side of the hole. I thought yesterday the magnificent third shot Rocco hit into this green and that missed putt. If he doesn't win the U.S. Open, that's the one he's going to think about at nighttime. I really do. He hit a super shot yesterday and missed that putt. I must say that this green does slope from the back to the front and Rocco missed it yesterday going back to the right on that putt. And so this one will pull to his right as well if it does anything. Company players to win on the same course twice in a season. Ben Hogan, 48 LA Open, went on to win this championship that same year. Jack did it at Pebble. Tiger has already done it at Pebble and now has a chance to distinguish himself as the only one to do it uh, again, having won the Buick Invitational by eight shots earlier this year and uh, hoping to put this championship away. Well, the tees are up again at 14, the short par four. Gonna have a little fun here, 269 yards. That's the back tee we're gonna fly over right now at 435. And as we pull forward, you see on the right, the tee, which we'll be playing today, 277 to the middle. The hole is short of the middle, and as we pull back, you'll see Whole location today, right in between both bunkers, right in the front of the green. You can lay it up here, though. You can, in fact, lay it up there. Tiger did yesterday. Tiger said that this couldn't have been a worse yardage for him. He's right in between clubs. There's the live shot. You don't want to go long. You'll go right into the cavern. Rocco put it in the bunker yesterday, had a perfect little blast right to the hole, made birdie. So it's very inviting and done on purpose by the USGA. Just to tempt you just a little bit. Into the wind and a little to the right and they got the whole location right where you could make a hole in one for a double eagle. I believe his tee shot here yesterday, Bob. I love this one. Been perfect distance. I don't think it'll make it, but. Uh, you're absolutely right because it landed uh, back in the bunker, ran a bit when it landed in the bunker. So he had the right club. Tiger said he's between clubs here. We'll get Rogers feeling on that in a moment. A couple of deep breaths and let it go. Breeze has picked up just a little bit. Well, he hit it hard again. It's just a little right. Coming right on. Just couldn't reach it with that club. That's all. We can't hit it any better. I'd like to hit him right like that. Well done, right. Yeah, he's firing away at this one. Coming with the three wood, that has to be a pretty good cut but for Tiger. Well, actually, Bob, I feel like the wind has kind of switched uh -huh. a little bit, and it's kind of hurting the players here. You know, a little while ago, it was coming more out of the south. Yeah, it's, it's more, a little bit more left than it has been out of the ice. Okay. Cool. You can see the flag on the green. Got it. You believe he's played this whole three over par, Roger? No, I don't. A little tiny hole is. Made eating a, his lunch. Yeah, he made a double bogey the first two day, first day, when he uh, had had it right in front of the green, and then missed the chip, put it in the heavy stuff. 
Tease missed only, that again. T's only been up here twice, but still, that's not real good for Tiger. Kind of fluttering up a little bit, pretty much in the same line as Rocco's. Maybe a little right of that. Just a little right. Setting up again. Appears to be a reasonable lie. So fun hole, a short par four. Brings a lot of thoughts into mind. There you have it, Tiger and Rocco. Some pretty good swings in this uh, Monday 18 hole playoff. Tiger had the two shot lead over Rocco through seven. And then uh, after the 10th hole, when uh, Rocco bogeyed it and Tiger parted, Tiger got his biggest lead of the day, which was three. After the 11th hole, Rocco cut into it as he made a par and Tiger bogeyed it. And then cut it into the lead uh, again at the 12th with Tiger's bogey and Rocco's par. They exchange birdies at 13, and it is just a one-shot difference here with just five holes to play. It is getting down to crunch time here in this U.S. Open Championship, both just short of the green at the short par 414th. Rocco said in the paper this morning that uh, he said on tour, we don't count anybody out. So he says, uh, it's not automatic to count me out of this hey, playoff. Up, the play, play, but I do you. wish I wasn't playing against the uh, the best in the world. He said it might be a little easier. These are both reasonably makeable. Maybe one in five or six chance. Looks to be a pretty good lie, Roger. It is a very good lie. Pitching into the wind, the green kind of works away from him. A little bit right to left. Chunked it. A little chunky. Well, he got away with it, though. Got that down slope. Pretty easy putt from there if you're going to be 10 feet. I'm not. But a very nice kick he did, yes. He's done that twice today. Souls that club and comes back to the roots, and the roots say, not even for you, Tiger. Yeah, there's Kakuya under there, and boy, it'll stop a club. It'll stop it right now. Okay, Rocco is charged with hitting a better chip than he did back on. Was it 10, Mark? It was 10, and this is pretty much the same kind of shot. your ball, Rocco. Well, he's making sure there's no mud or anything on the back. Right. There's Birdie. He's got a chance here, Mark, to be even with uh, Tiger with four holes to play if Tiger misses this upcoming putt. I think Rocco's feeling pretty proud of himself. Two birdies in a row. He's thinking, hey, I'm pushing him a little. I'm not laying down and saying, go ahead, 14th major just for you, Tiger. I just wanted to get a good view. We talk. Go ahead, Murph. I see that as a great tension reliever for Rocco myself. Uh, to go ahead and make that birdie. And you gotta feel better about yourself. Back to back birdies. To the eye of the tiger as he studies. Not much in this, Roger, huh? I don't see a lot in it, uh, Bob. I didn't get a chance to get over and get right in behind it because of the way the hole was uh, laid out here. But I can't imagine it would do much from this angle. Somebody get that horn off, huh? I don't think that'll bother Tiger. His father used to drop the golf bag in the middle of his swing just to test him. Yeah, drop coins and right in his backswing. It's a great commercial, isn't it, Murph, that we had a chance Fantastic, to listen to over yes. the weekend, how Earl Woods described his boy as tough and that he would no doubt ever meet anyone tougher than he is. Mentally. Can't tell you how big a putt this is for Rocco and Tiger. the edge 
wedge that did not go in. We've seen a couple really crawl in. Now we've been out here exactly three hours and a couple minutes, and it is all tied up. Both both plus one. The game is on. Tiger had a three-shot lead through ten holes. It's all gone. So many of these have gone in for Tiger all week. Rocco has the top player of the world on the ropes. Are we about to witness one of the biggest upsets in U.S. Open Championship history? Or can Tiger Woods hold off Rocco Mediate and win his third U.S. Open title? They are at the 15th dead even at plus one, four holes to go to maybe decide the national championship. It would go on to sudden death if they're locked tied after 18. This hole has not been Rocco's friend. He's hit it left two, hole, two days in a row here. Giving it plenty of room to the right. I'm not sure it's going to come back. Come on, Mark. Get in there. Oh, there. That's a nice kick. And Tyler almost never hits this fairway, folks. He's been in the right rough. I bet 85% of the time he's played this thing in his career, he always hits it right here. 15 through 18, there's how they played it. Advantage Tiger through the first four rounds of this championship. This playoff has gotten intense in a hurry. It looked like Tiger was going to walk away with this trophy at the start of the back nine. And yes, this fairway is a rip and just the way it looks on TV. Right again, John. I don't know what it is about this hole, but I've watched him in San Diego and he hits it right there. If you, you put a flag stick there, it birdied every time. And again, Outside the ropes for Tiger Woods. Advantage Rocco. Can he take a lead on Tiger? Put some pressure on a guy that can deal with pressure of any kind, seemingly. Fifteenth hole has been uh, not kind to either Tiger Woods or Rocco Mediate. Tiger way right. In fact, he's in a bunker by the ninth hole, by the ninth fairway. So far right, Tiger went. It's a bad angle, and you know it's tough to hit it flush out of this fluffy sand. His left foot might be on the side of that little hill there. Um, the good news, I think he's um, whole location's right here. So I think he's going to be able to go right up the gap, which um, is a very good break. But I will have to ask Roger Malpe if that is the case. But it looks like he got lucky. Well, I think he's going to have an awkward stance, Johnny. Uh, I think his feet are going to be well above the ball. I can't tell if he'll have to stand out of the bunker. I don't think so. But his feet are going to be, you know, on a steep slope. Well, you can dig in there. You can't create a stance, but you can dig down in there to get good footing and. Uh, It'll level it out somewhat, but you're right. He will be standing above it. But as far as the opening, and Rocco's going to be away. That was 75 so front big shot for Rocco. 86 front? Uh, yeah, 86 front. Left to right. Left to right. That's just what he wants to carry at 186. It's a good hole location for Rocco. Just hit it, what, Mark? Just inside the right bunker with a draw? Yeah, and just hold it against the wind. Two straight birdies to pull even. Boy, that's a nice clean hit, Johnny, just right of the flag. Rock is putting the pressure to Tiger. Seldom do we see it. How many times we talked about major championship Sundays? Well, forget about Sunday, it's Monday. But can somebody take down the Titan? When it matters most in the final few holes. He was one of the most unlikely candidates before this championship began. And now Tiger almost in a trance like state before hitting this one out of the bunker. 
we've got it at 170 yards. Steve Wilmer trying to work his way through the crowd to get back in there and get a yardage for Tiger. Okay. And who would have thought after the 10th hole, folks, that Tiger Woods would be even par and Rocco Media plus three wheels were wobbling. Uh, this thing was over. It looked like a Tiger coronation on the back nine at another major. But just be real it still drop it. Thank even you. And, uh, uh, both same score and Tiger's in trouble. And, and he knows that he knows that he's in trouble. I'm telling you right now. You do not want to be one down with three holes to go. But this is Tiger Woods. Yeah, but you don't want to give a guy the you know the confidence of being up one up one stroke up I should say This is a good looking golf shot from back there. I'll tell you what, that is a great golf shot. It's coming back too. It's a tiger shot. It's a tiger shot. Why would you ever doubt him in a position like that? What a shot. Maybe the best shot he's hit the whole championship. Especially with Rocco pouring the steam to him. Rocco's got to be just shaking his head right now. Take another look at this magnificent second. He's got a way back in the stance for a crossover, sort of a, a Chi Chi draw. He plays that high shoulder move into that slice win. You could put a small bucket in there for Tiger, and he wouldn't do better than that, but a couple times. He's had so much magic here at Torrey Pines through the years, of course, winning this uh, title here six times including the last four years this was the final round of the 2003 buick invitational when tiger hit a four iron from behind a tree he was 203 yards away and he made that birdie to help put away the victory and ironically that was in his first start since knee surgery two months prior so there was magic at tory for tiger and you just saw the latest example of the kinds of shots he's produced here through the years. Well, he got Hogan's alley and Riviera he got Tiger's alley right at 15. What a plaque down. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be people that play this golf course in the next couple of weeks that they'll go over there and look at that bunker and say. Wow, did he really do that? Morocco just said something to Tiger but that put a little wide smile on his face. They're good friends. Uh, Rocco had wished to get in the hunt of this championship with Tiger. He says, I want the best. He's a good pal. And this is what Rocco, uh, his reaction to Tiger <laughs> after watching that. You're good, pal. You <laughs> are really good. That's a head shaker. Well, a couple of things here now, Johnny. First of all, Rocco's going to show Tiger the line, which when Tiger knows the exact line, you're in trouble. But this is not a particularly hard putt for Rocco. It's a little bit on the quick side. Is it possible somebody could steal the scene from Tiger where maybe a guy like Rocco can roll this thing in and Tiger miss? Maybe. We've seen the other exchange over and over again.
first long putt of the day. What a time to do it. You are seeing something very, very unusual in the final few holes of the major championship. Someone stepping up and right moments after Tiger delivered some of his Tiger-esque magic. You're watching Rocco mediate at the age of 45. Answer it. What a beautiful putt. I would love to get inside of Tiger's head right now thinking she was three up just a little while ago. What's going on three three strokes better than Rocco and now the guys playing like me. Tell you what's going on three birdies in a row by Rocco mediate and now Tiger to stay even with Rocco with three holes left. What's happened in the last few minutes here is just unbelievable. I can't even begin to tell you how good I think that shot was Tiger played here. And then to have Rocco follow with that putt, my goodness. Momentum has completely switched his way, hasn't it, Johnny? I, I, I tell you, it's one of the great moments in all the televised golf I've been able to cover. This is right at the very top. Uh, just the scene right now and the amount of people and uh, the pressure that's on Tiger exerted by Rocco that this is one of those exchanges I was talking about it could be happening if the Tiger exchange in reverse 18 hole playoffs in US Opens normally are somewhat of a downer anticlimactic but can he this make it anything can he make it different. just a squash um, me it's hope it's even though they're still the same score if he makes it This is uh, this will take his full attention right here. Rocco's got to that towel <laughs> a little bit more in the last few minutes. Yeah, he's just sweating like crazy right now. Rocco is. Not often you see the pressure reversed like this on Tiger. It's usually going the other way. I tell you, since that bogey of Rocco's on 10, Rocco has played. Perfect golf. Just every shot right on the butt. It's Rocco's championship at the moment. By one as they head to a long. 16th. The atmosphere here absolutely electric as Rocco Mediate could be on the cusp of perhaps the third most shocking victory in U.S. Open history if you go back to 1913 and Francis Wimet and Jack Fleck what he was able to pull off Johnny in 1955 again not a lot of people thought Rocco was going to deal with the heat yesterday. Not a lot of people gave him any kind of chance today in an 18 hole playoff with Tiger Woods. He's got the one shot lead. I tell you, he's earned every stroke of it. I'll tell you that. I mean, what he's done in the last hour has been sa sensational. Three under par. To have that, those two putts after the phenomenal shot by Tiger out of the bunker, which could have crumbled anybody, thinking that Tiger would not miss that putt. And for him to get up and knock in that curler and Tiger miss, uh, right now he's just. He's got to really settle down right now, though. I really believe he's always jumpy, but right now he might be uh, real jumpy. He has overturned his shot. Yeah, he's he's turned it too far left here. Three of the four days, Johnny. Well, interesting to me, guys, uh, to a noticeable difference after the 10th hole. Remember, we talked about the iron shots out to the right, the, the lack of releasing the club, Johnny. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like to me, he got to a position where he said, if I'm going to go down, I'm going to go down fighting. Since then, we have not seen him hit a poor shot. Not steering it. No, this is one exactly. Very aggressive, much freer. And the par threes have been a difference today. Rocco has played them in one under, Tiger in three over. Well, here's another one, last of the threes. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's a four iron for Rocco. It is very high and very straight. And going to come out a little short and not bounce forward. Very good miss. That's good position. He's got it up a little too high. I tell you what, if I was Rocco, I would not be disappointed in that shot. You should make par from there. Par is super on this hole. Tiger's taking one more club, I think. I think he is reacting to Rocco's shot that was into the wind. Uh, Gary? I would agree. This is the three. Rehearsing uh, very much a fade follow through, Johnny, like he's going to try to set this thing left and kind of carve it up there. Yeah, when he takes an extra club, you know he's going to go to the car because that takes off about a half of the club yardage. Aggressive. I mean, three is going to be a good yeah. score. Put the ball in the middle of the green. If you happen to make a birdie, great. But, uh, I really believe he's going to have to play the next three holes, Tiger. One under par to force extra holes. We're in extra holes or even more extra holes. Remember, though, he's got such an advantage at 18 with his length. Yeah, if you can hit the fairway. Well. Yesterday he hit it in the bunker and had to lay it up and laid it up in the rough. So it's all about uh, putting it in the short stuff unless you get lucky in the rough. He's back to the four iron Roger. I believe so, John. And the wind has dropped and it feels like it's a little more from the right than it was hurting a little bit earlier. Uh, I like this club better than the three myself. at the hole if it will get up. And it just chases onto the green, but in good position. Well, an unlikely turn of events. Rocco mediate three birdies since his bogey at the 10th. This the last one at the 15th. Down the hill, curling to the left. And Rocco mediate has taken the lead in the playoff for the 108th U.S. Open. Stay with us. Tiger has such an impressive playoff record. Rocco Mediate has only been involved in two playoffs in his PGA Tour career, yet he's won both of them and against uh, former major champions. His first win against Curtis Strange and then Steve Elkington a couple of years later. But this is Tiger Woods and the U.S. Open's on the line, Gary. Well, it is uh, incredibly interesting and incredibly exciting. Now, Mark, uh, I see Rocco has. Uh, Taking the putter out. He has, Gary, and I really like this decision at this stage. It's, it's about the same distance he was off the green at number 10 when he chipped. But uh, this one was going down green. Yeah, it's all about speed. You know, he's got uh, seven eight feet before he gets right under that old pop somewhere. Or shadow. You can tend if to. He just okay. tuned in, and when he tried to chip at the 10th, he right. chunked it. Right. Yeah. So he is definitely going to play some left hand break here. It's a little bit slow. Yeah, it is indeed. This club, you can leave it a little short. Somehow he can finish three, four, five. He's got a great chance. Pleased with that, yep. <laughs> nice smile. Well, 
I would think your inner tiger had to pick up quite a little bit of knowledge from watching that putt. Certainly about the pace of it. This is a pretty similar effort. I, I still like the four, and even though he got it on the front of the green as opposed to the three, because you just can't hit it over on this hole. The slope coming in from the back of the green. Tiger's got to be a little careful that he doesn't think I got to make this and knock it by on Gary and maybe three putt. Well, I, I agree, John, and, and I think you've got to figure if you make a three here, fine. You still have two holes left, and again, I go to 18 where he's got the huge advantage with the length if he can put it in the fairway. and it was fairly high. Take a look at the 17th hole, the par four that measures 441 yards, and it, it gives the players options. Johnny, I've seen some yeah. guys take driver and get it past these bunkers and leave a short shot into the green. A lot of other players will lay back off the tee, trying to play to the wider part of the fairway. Second shot is played uphill, so the players really cannot see the putting surface. And the whole location today is over on the middle right portion of the green. Well, the advantage for Rocco is that the tee shot sets up beautifully for his draw. The bad news for Rocco is that probably he'll get it into the middle of the green with his draw. So um, still like it if he can get it in the fairway. Let's see if he can stay aggressive and freewheeling. Rocco! It's head toward the right hand bunker trying to draw off it. It gets a favorable bounce, and that is First okay. First cut. Another good swing, Gary, that he released. That second shot, even though he's got a big hook line, he hooks it, Gary. It's got a slice wind, though, right? Yes, wind is coming across a little from the left. So that'll help him. Tiger has hit just one of his last six fairways, Johnny. Yeah, he just doesn't want to miss it right short side himself on the second. See if he can control his swing. What a moment in golf, really. You know, he's trying to get that 14th major championship, get on off that unlucky number 13. Oh, he likes it. Oh, yeah, he's turning there at the right center. Fairly, it's very good here. Very, very good. Nice control swing. So both players in good position at the 17th. Rocco Mediate with a late charge has taken the one shot lead. Stay with us, we'll be right back. We've done a lot of US Opens, Johnny. This could be culminating into one of the best we've ever done. So much drama, Tiger and all the limping around that he did on the golf course and then Rocco Mediate here with just a couple holes left clinging to a one shot lead. 
over Tiger. You know, it's Raven Tigers huh. uh, seven one putts. Well, these flags are showing down. First ten holes, in. saying that's the reason why he's won these majors. Oh. Is that great putting, and I've sort of jinxed him the last six holes. No one putts. That's been the difference. And Rocco has made one putts. Well, Gary, this is fantastic. Well, isn't it? it is, and uh, Tiger will play first. And uh, Roger Mulvey, if I were in this situation, one shot behind, I would want to hit first. Absolutely. Well, and he can apply a lot of pressure. Really good. 162 to the hole. Back right terrace. When switched it, we're in Well, it hits from the team. There's no way it can be. It has to be across to down, not in. Right there, it's in. Yeah, that's in. I mean, yesterday on this hole here, yeah, they're receiving pretty good. But when it carried, it was 160. Seven on the corner, the other thing carried about 170. It was 63 in the hole. I, I think it's slightly against. Right now it is. Yeah, you got to hit some kind of seven right here. As we look at the flag flutter up at the green, it would indicate pretty much straight across. Yeah. Does that mean that wind's gone back to the northwest? Yes. Or it has huh. back that way. That's what it was. Most like days. showing cross to help. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't take too much nice of it as we get wrapped around the pole. But every time, slightly in. Every time it's like showed slightly in. Uphill, slightly into the wind. What's it carry? Uh, underneath that yeah. ridge is 57. Huh. That's the, what's what's the carry on the front row? Right there, it's just three more. Yeah, 52. Yeah, exactly. Well, the way he's choking up on this club, uh, Roger, I would think this is a seven iron. I would think so too. I would imagine it's going to be a little baby cut coming up here. Yeah, it's just, just dead stop now. Takes cuts for a caddy to call you off the shot. Here on the 17th hole, one down, and it takes guts. It's got more across, Helen. It's down right there. Yeah, it's slotted. Johnny, I like this club better. An eight iron, a good full swing. The last thing he needs to do is hit it too far. I like the full draw, slightly draw with the slice wind, full eight iron, and it'll hold it dead straight. Flag sticks right here, folks. That is the shot shape, and it is just left of the hole. And it is good about. Uh, feet behind the hole, he carried that ball past hole, huh? He had plenty of club with yeah, that Yeah, he club. did. Absolutely. Plus, he's a little adrenaline up, you know? Right, Both these guys. All right, Rocco next. Not going to be a lot of deliberation here. That was only crowd noise that backed him off there. He's got 154, a nice lie in the intermediate rough. Saturday night, he did tell me, Rocco, what winning this U.S. Open championship would mean to him. Everything as far as golf's concerned. Everything as far as golf's concerned. That would probably be, I'd, I, I might just quit after that happened. If that happened. No, I'd probably play a little bit longer. <laughs> it's always been his favorite championship. Those are the pins on his cap that he collects from past U.S. Open sites. He's got a Tory pin, Tory Pines pin up there. Loves this championship. His good friend Arnold Palmer, who watched Yo. the proceedings yesterday, 
back in western Pennsylvania where Rocco hails from just down the road in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. And he's got the same kind of charisma that Arnie has. Connects with the fans, looks him in the eye, and first played with Arnold Palmer as a teenager at La Trobe years ago. Arnold Palmer won his only U.S. Open at Cherry Hills in 1960, but Arnie was 0-3 in the U.S. Open playoffs. And Jack Nicholas recently has lamented, why doesn't somebody play good against Tiger? Why does he always just get the door opened up for him? Well, Jack Nicholas is playing in my tournament in Salt Lake City as we speak. I'm not there. But uh, the bottom line is, is he's going to be pretty surprised if somebody reports that not that this thing's over by any means, folks, but Rocco one up with one stroke up with, uh, you know, this green and the next hole to go. Yeah, and remember, guys, uh, Rocco was one up on Tiger <laughs> at this stage of the competition yesterday as well. Yeah, Tiger ended up birdieing the mm -hmm. 72nd hole to force mm -hmm. what we're seeing today. Johnny, it's amazing too when you think back. Some of the guys that really have kind of played well against Tiger, they're guys like Rocco. I mean, how about Bob May? In that PGA Marco. Championship years ago. Uh, guys that, uh, you know, Rich Beam beat him in the PGA that one year at Hazel Team. Guys that uh, were certainly, you wouldn't have given them much of a chance. But again, just to put it in the back of your mind, Tiger had the 54 hole lead in this championship and has never lost. After three rounds at a major when he's had at least a share of the lead. And being three up with eight to go and now you know one stroke down uh, that's that's a quite a turnaround. Mark not an easy putt here. No it's not Gary getting the pace is going to be extremely difficult because the ridge and the shelf that the holes cut on is very very small back there. I'm going to say the ridge is only about six feet in front of the hole so he has to make sure he gets up and over that and not race it too far by. Keep it in front of the hole, wouldn't you, Gary? Ideally, if you're not going to make it, I would agree, John. Yes. Easy, easy. Okay. That's probably going to feel like about an eight footer for a, a mid-aged guy. This hole has been pretty special to Tiger. Third round Saturday. It's this pitch shot from Bobby Bunker, and he admitted later that <laughs> he hit it too hard. It was going to go eight or ten feet by. But it went right down in the hole. Rod, you had a chance to look at this one? I have. It's a uh, downhill slider to the right. And historically, this has been his kind of stage, hasn't it? I, I, you just sense a lot of people saying he's going to make this one. Not an easy putt. You just sort of have to sit back and just absorb every second of this guy in these kind of situations. Just watch his demeanor, you young people out there. What he's watching, his observations, body language, slows everything down, doesn't it? Yeah, look at the eyes, kids. He talks to himself. I wish we all do that in the second part of our career. So, considering it was headed toward the ocean, real sticky. Tiger in with his par four. Rocco with a tricky one left. Boy, you have to think, Gary, he's probably as nervous over this putt as any he has ever had. This is just that length that 
It's not an easy one. This is that Scott Hoke length. You can see deep breath. He's stuck to his routine, Johnny, which uh, is so important in these situations. And I kind of like it because he, he, he doesn't take a lot of time. That's his normal routine. Take the one practice stroke back behind the ball. And then move in, take a look, let it go. Yesterday in regulation when Tiger birdied the 72nd to move it to today. Par 5 18th moved up today again, 525 yards. It's just such a great moment right now, folks. This hole here is playing a birdie eagle hole. A lot can happen there here, but you have to hit the fairway. If you hit in those bunkers or the rough, it brings a whole bunch of things in, in the equation, including a layup to this lake right here. And Tiger hit it in the left bunker yesterday and laid it up just past this tree on the right uh, there and had to hack it out of there. Of course, made the great birdie. But you can see the green, the whole location. The whole location's in the back right, right of those right arrows. There it is right there. It's not a, not a hard hole location at all. In fact, it's an eagle hole location for Tiger if he can hit a good drive. So Rocco could make a par here and lose the U.S. Open to Tiger. But if Tiger gets it, I mean, if Rocco gets it in the fairway, he's going to have quite the decision to make being a one stroke ahead. But first things first, fairway right here. This one is pulled again, just like he did yesterday. shot but the good news it's backing up from the lip and it is a layup and I think that no matter where he drove it with one stroke with a one stroke lead he would almost have to lay it up regardless. Tiger eagled this hole Saturday to give himself the 54 hole he birdied it yesterday. And with the bad left knee and all the stories and the three eagles and the phenomenal shots he's hit that made people go crazy it all comes down to this one shot right here he has to have one of the good ones right here Roger. He's got to somehow think about what do I have to do to hit a good drive with a slice wind. Easy to lose it right for him. Hurt. A little grimace, a little flinch there after the swing. Doesn't mean it's not in the fairway, and Tiger's right in the middle. Well, there's Tiger when he has to hit it. He does it. That makes this hole for him a par four. You're watching one of the greatest U.S. Open championships in history. Tiger Woods trailing Rocco Mediate by one at the par five 18. Just another reason why this U.S. Open Championship has been so compelling. Tiger with that uh, sore knee and the fact that he's been able to overcome it with incredible strokes at the right time. This was late in the day Saturday for Eagle at the 18th hole, which he's playing now. And that gave him the one-shot lead heading into the final round. He came to this hole again yesterday. Needed to get it up and down from the rough for birdie to force the playoff. One of three Eagles he's made this U.S. Open Championship week. Again, looking to continue the quest on Jack Nicklaus right right. and major championship number 14. But it's Rocco who has the one-shot lead on this par five. Mark. It's a good lie, a little bit on the upslope. The lip should not be a problem. I think he's going to try and hit it about 165. How's that look, Mark? Well, it's headed up the right-hand side. Should be just fine. 
That's his 67th shot of the day. Tiger is hitting his 68th shot of the day, but the, the good news for Tiger is technically they'll both be hitting their 68th shot into the green. The advantage is Rocco is way up ahead of Tiger, so in reality it is dead even right now. It's just they got different length shots. <laughs> If you catch my drift. Yeah, we, we get your drift. Uh, Roger, what is the distance here for Tiger? Has 217 left of the hole, Dan, uh, 198 to the front of the green. Uh, wind coming from the left, but it's, uh, boy, it's just set up perfectly for him from here, John. Yeah, this is uh, like setting the scene. It's like, how could you make a Hollywood finish any better? He is one of the greatest script writers, not only in the history of golf, but in the history of sports. Well, that wind is coming pretty much dead left to right with a titch of helping. So if he cuts it, it'll help him. If he draws it, it'll knock it down maybe a yard or two. I don't think it's going to rip I like that. Okay. Got four. Here, Johnny. Driving a four iron. Got a little bit of a hook lie. It's a, got some great things to aim at here. Probably in between the two towers on Roger. Maybe let it just ride the wind slightly. Or do you think you'll play the draw? That would be a wonderful line. Really, it would. Let the wind just drift it back a little bit. Some noise backs Tiger off. Rehearsals, yeah. A couple rehearsals, let them get settled. Fans have been waiting behind that 18th green since 6 o'clock this morning, and I think it was, it's was it been well worth the wait. I'll say. Cut at the center of the green. Didn't have a lot of room to play with there, but it is safely on in two. Now Rocco's lead in reality is gone. It's just whether he can hit a better shot than Tiger and get it up and in and Tiger not make that part. Yep. So it's right down to brass tacks here. So it's just as good as it gets. If Rocco's able to pull it off, he would not only be the oldest U.S. Open champion in history, he'd be the oldest first-time major champion ever. Third shot coming up here to the par five. And he's going to do the most amazing thing looking at Tiger in the eye. He's got a good chance to play the last six holes four under par. He's got a chance to reverse Tiger golfing history. Tiger's never lost yeah, I mean, the lead in a 54 holes. It's not a hard one. It's just well, the 52 is no good, is it? Well, where do we want to land? It's probably we're just right on top of this ridge. ridge. Absolutely. 120 is the perfect spot. This is the one, though. All right. Agreed? I love it. I think he's got the perfect club, folks. This could be close with that trap draw of his. With a slice win, it's a green lighter. Pulled it just a little bit, Johnny, but it may be a good distance. That's a very makeable putt right there.
Not his best shot, but under pressure. <laughs> That's pretty good. Tiger with 64 PGA Tour wins for Rocco Mediate. This is his 138th tour start since his last win six years ago at Greensboro. In the meantime, Tigers won 41 times in his last 138 starts on tour. And Rocco could distinguish himself in golf history to this point as the only guy to take down Tiger when Tigers had the lead. And again, this, the proximity to Tiger's home, born in Southern California in Cyprus, just 90 miles away. This is like a home game for him. He's won here six times. All of those elements make this uh, championship victory potentially for Rocco one of the sweetest in the history of this game. Mark, your feelings right now, can you hear me? Well, I, Johnny, don't know if I've ever witnessed golf like this. I mean, it is, it's really hard to describe. Roger, what are you feeling? Well, I'm here behind the green. <laughs> the commotion here is uh, pretty remarkable right now. Tiger's putt now uh, up a bit of a, a ridge uphill. We'll be moving from his left to right. Got to be in the area of close to 40 feet. This is a very slow putt. It's putting away from the water. We've seen this historically in the San Diego Open. And this week, when you're putting this direction, uh, away from the setting sun, away from the ocean, somehow you got to really remember just how slow this is. Well, Rocco, good friend of Tiger. In fact, after Tiger, Hit his second shot on. There was Rocco applauding Woods as they walked up to the green here at 18. Such a great guy. So popular, not only with the media, but with fellow players. His good friend, Lee Jansen, two-time U.S. Open champion, uh, was here yesterday. They went to the same school at Florida Southern. And the Moccasins, maybe, will have three U.S. Open titles to boast about. A Division II school. He's... He, he's drying off that putter like it's sweating like him. Can Tiger evoke eagle magic one more time? He's got a chance to just literally steal it away from Rocco with this putt if Rocco doesn't make it. He did it yesterday. Remember that after six o'clock, huh? Just made that putt coming down the hill to force this playoff. Might be going into double overtime, folks. See if he can get it to the hole. today a little left for birdie that's a lot of left so Rocco mediate has a putt to win the US Open Championship at the age of 45 and right now he is like a cat on the hot tin roof been on tour for more than 20 years I'll tell you what if I had a putter in my hand I'd be shaking right now and I'm not even playing I mean, this is great theater, and uh, he's got two ways to win this. He can miss this, and Tiger can miss that putt. That is not a gimme. But I think he's got to think, I have to make this. I can't give this guy another shot at beating me, Mark. No doubt about it. He said that a couple of times yesterday, and this is not that difficult a putt if it weren't for what sake here. Does it move just a little right? Yeah, I, I say it's maybe a cup on the left. It's not very quick. It's uphill, a little bit into the grain. Rocket was on the golf course uh, on Saturday hearing all those incredible roars of Tiger rolling in eagle putts. He would love nothing more than to put a charge into this crowd for a U.S. Open championship. Never had a chance. The 
Yeah, and there's a little left after that. That was a bit of a trick putt. They actually went left at the hole. Oh, man. And now the pressure is ratcheted way up on Rocco, especially if Tiger makes this. And Tiger has called in Stevie for a little help with this uh, birdie attempt. Oh, boy, these are the length that... Uh they're just the hardest length to make, I, I think, uh, Roger, you know, because you, you're supposed to make it. And you just got to commit, I guess, just go back to basics. And same thing with Rocco. He's got that length that it's pretty scary. So see if somebody hiccups here, Roger. Well, John, as we said earlier, I mean, there's nobody I, ever in the game that's been as good as committing to just making a good stroke. So I'll just make a good stroke and let what happens happens and commit to his line and commit to his stroke. This has a bit of a trick to it. I, you know, I, I made a star on my thing when I have a trick putt, and I didn't, didn't say it. This thing tries to actually go, and Rocco's did it to the back of the green, and I'm not sure. I don't know if uh, Rocco's putt maybe would influence Tiger at all, but um, he better not hit it to right edge. Is all I can tell you. Can you see that, uh, Roger? What I'm talking about? Well, I'm behind the green, John, so yeah. I don't have that angle on it. Yeah, we'll see. We talked so many times through the years that Jack Nicholas never missed putts that mattered so much. Tiger is in that moment right now. You he would might, not expect him to miss this. Might be right center, but. Uh, is that a bird that just flew over? Seagull. A <laughs> seagull. As Tiger lines up a birdie. Tiger's done it again. He needed a birdie to force more holes, and he's done it. A par putt to continue this U.S. Open Championship to sudden death. Mark, anything in this that uh, might trip him up? <laughs> other than the, the U.S. Fact, Open Championship. Other than the fact that the trophy's still on the line? I don't think it should trick him up, but dead straight putt. Ninety holes through the 108th U.S. Open, and still not enough to decide a champion. Sudden death, we go for just the third time since it was instituted back in 1954. Rocco and Tiger play on, and they'll be going over to the par 4 7th, then on to the par 3 8th. If they need to. If they need to, and then on to 18 and repeat that if necessary. So I guess it's only appropriate that uh, we continue on, signing their cards right on the spot here. Two terrific rounds of 71. These guys, uh, obviously, Tiger, it's not as surprising for him, but. For Rocco to come down with three down with eight holes to go and he had a putt to beat Tiger that does not happen often on the last green. All right here's Tiger's birdie. An awkward length. Just the nerves of steel just just hearted it. Nerves just hardened by so many moments like this in major championships. And then Rocco with the par putt. So it finished up pretty much just like you thought, Johnny. And you think that was an easy little putt, folks? No way. It wasn't. 
108th U.S. Open Championship continues on the sudden death. Sudden death for just the third time in a U.S. Open Championship, 1990 Medina, when Hale Irwin held off Mike Donald on the 91st hole, and then Ernie Els is par of the 92nd hole, defeated Lauren Roberts at Oakmont back in 1994. So the players uh, working their way back to the seventh tee. Rocco flew over there. Tiger's just munching and drinking a little uh, to get his, I guess, energy going, but he'll be over there in a second. And Tiger will have the honor. And this was a part of his round today where he uh, had some of his best play. He birdied the sixth, and then right after birdieing that long par four, which is over 500 yards, this Johnny was his second shot to the seventh, which they will begin the sudden death playoff on. Really stayed down on that good divot, and he's just painting it right in there, just like the hole before. Just two great iron shots in a row in six and seven, and I'm sure he'll recall those. He gets to play the same hole location. Watch this putt right here, how he stays down. Watch his head. Does not move. He tilts his head, but doesn't raise it. Tiger got a two-shot lead with that birdie and actually had a three-shot lead through 10 holes of the 18-hole playoff. But then Rocco with birdies at 13, 14, and 15 actually took a one-shot lead with three holes to play. And then Tiger uh, squared it all up again with a birdie at the 18th. <laughs> He's dying both shoes twice. That's a different one. Maybe that's Rocco's. Rocco's got to keep busy. He's that kind of guy. Uh, Roger, we couldn't help but see you have a little uh, word with Rocco. What was he telling you? Well, he said a couple of things. One, he says, they wanted a show. They got a show. And then he came over to me and said, you know, before I hit that first putt at 18, I told myself, you're never going to get this chance again. Do not leave it short. Well, that's what Raymond Floyd told him. When Raymond Floyd won the U.S. Open at Shinnecock back in 86, he told Rocco, I knew that was my, my shot. I knew it was the opportunity. And uh, Rocco has to keep telling himself that. Tiger birding the last there to go to sudden death. So he did have the honors by the fact that he made the birdie and Rocco made the par. It's been a more comfortable hole for Tiger, Johnny. He's made two birdies in the five rounds that they've played. Rocco, on the other hand, a little uncomfortable hitting a draw on this dogleg right. And he's played the hole with one bogey in five rounds, so a difference. A little surprised Tiger ate so much between the green and the tee here and drank as much as he did. Um, not always good to eat in the middle of a round too much. Maybe just one bite or two. But uh, this is a big shot for Tiger because, you know, one of the shots in his arsenal, Bob Murphy, is that big flare to the right like he hit it. Uh, you remember at number 15? And that exactly. surely wouldn't work here. He hit a good one earlier, though. Quite a number of them the first two days when the knee seemed to be worse than it is now. He seems to be very much in control. The guy hits the fairway. He's got a huge advantage here. Twenty four thousand people at least crowding this golf course for just two players. Well, they're getting the show. <laughs> this ball going up the right side. okay stays inside the fairway line he's gonna have a big advantage he cut the corner plus he already has 30 yards on Rocco so Rocco's gonna be going in with a long iron and Tiger's probably not too many feet from where he made birdie this morning probably isn't much very far from his divot Rocco earlier this week drove it in the left fairway bunker twice and earlier today he drove it in the right rough
This one's going left again, Murph, toward that bunker. Maybe short. No, just no in. Jumped in. Just a hard hole, and that is up against the lift. That may not be good at all. Uh, give him credit, though. He has really stuck in there today. Imagine birding 13, 14, 15. Take a look. Here you see. That's what Rocco doesn't want to do. Go left. He did. It's a dogleg right. Always uncomfortable for a guy who draws it. We'll watch as the balls land on the green, the whole location today, over on the front left. And there you see as the balls collect back to the front of the green and away. If you go a little left, you go down that swale. There's the whole location. Tiger, as we saw, put it in there about, oh, 16, 18 feet right under the hole earlier. Made a birdie. Johnny Miller, we've, we've said it, but I don't remember anything like this in a long, long time. Yeah, this has been fantastic. It's too bad Rocco, you know, didn't make the good swing on the tee shot at 18 and went left in the bunker. Now he's gone left in the bunker again, and uh, he's hung in there, but he had a great chance to make birdie on the last hole and win this thing outright, but the bad tee shot got him, and it looks like the bad tee shot might make him lose the championship. Let's he does something fantastic. Well, importantly, you have to sum up his emotions and uh, lay it up out of there in the fairway. You think it is a layup? It's that much in the lip? I couldn't see. Well, we'll let Mark Rolfing tell us when he gets down there. Yeah, I'm not sure. The green does open up from that left bunker if you can get a club on it. That's Mike Davis, the gentleman who's in charge of setting up the golf courses for the USGA. I think he shot 463s this week. Both of them from Western Pennsylvania. We've talked about Rocco's ties with Arnie. Those guys from Western PA hang tight. I mean, you got to thank the superintendent, the Green School, all the guys that are involved with setting up the course and cut, you know, taking care of this magnificent layout. Uh, they really did a great job. Fantastic. It will be back, I think. If it isn't, there's something wrong. <laughs> There's the lie. Got a hunk of sand behind it. Well, maybe John, Johnny, the, the lip of the bunker, I do not believe is going to be a problem. No, it isn't with this hook. Yep, I think he can go right of it. The issue is it's not a very good lie. The ball is sitting down in this soft sand. Obviously, no other player has been in this bunker today. It hasn't been raked. These are the only two that have played the course. The good news, he could hit a little ugly little Wind low running be. draw and run it up Obviously there Scottish right style, left, couldn't he? Helping, but yeah, he, he could. Angle should be just right to left. He's got 183 yards. The ball's below his feet, so that's going to negate a normal 76 hook. front, 84 hole. He's got a downhill lie. I think the shot is just a low scooter in there if he can do it. It is a clumpy, soft sand uh, this week. Yeah, get that ball back in your stance. You don't want to have that same slip that he had earlier today out of a bunker. This one is pulled. That came out way left. Did that hit the cart path or just scoot on that hard pin? I think it landed left of the cart path. I could jump right up against the grandstand over there. Let's check the feet and see if we see some slippage here. Okay, so far, okay, there comes the left foot back. That looked okay. Right foot pretty good, yep. Yeah. It was just the lie itself. Here's where it ends up now. Over to the grandstands area and up against it. Now Tiger Roger. 156. Left to the hole, Murph. Good angle, certainly from here, from the right-hand side of that hole over in the left. But a uh, little breeze coming from the right. Had a pretty hard wedge from 145 earlier today. I would imagine if he wants to hit something full, he'd hit the nine right now and just hit it right at the hole at the center green. Let the wind move it a little toward the hole. Back to him. You know, certainly sounds like a plan. You have a lot of green right of the hole. The man you're playing is, oh, he's in trouble. He's got a 
harsh angle from where he's left I'm down it. down right now. Like nine? Yep, absolutely. Going in fact to the nine iron, Roger. Well, that's a full one, but I think right now, uh, that's the shot you want to hit. Go with something. Full out. Certainly aiming out right. While drawing, it is a little right of the hole. Well played. Rocco giving a little wave there. Tiger, of course, much more stoic. Tiger hit the last seven greens in regulation, Murph. When he needed to, he just buckled right down. That's what he does, isn't it? We have had just incredible reactions from the gallery. Is the Cinderella story about to end? A little Rocco chant going. That's a drop zone put in by the USGA in the case of exactly what's just happened here. Mandatory that you drop in those areas, Roger. You know, Johnny, there's not been a lot of traffic uh, in many areas in this left rough, but there has been over this ball block. So there's a chance he may get a pretty good lie in here. He's got a better angle now than he did before. Yeah, the, the issue is going to be that knob on the front left corner of the green. He's got to land it, what, short of the green and one hop up and trickle, Bob? Yeah, and here's where you have to know how to drop your golf ball. He needs to hit an exact spot to find a good lie. Choose the grass that's laying down towards the hole. You see the shinier there. grass, that's where he's trying nice. to have it come to rest. It's in play and it's a good lie. As long as, it, as long as it lands in the circle, it's okay, right? Yeah, there's a decision. So long as it hit the ground within the circle which and it doesn't roll more than two club lengths, it's okay. The ball is in play. Sure speeds up play when you have those drop areas. That's the purpose of them, Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's not that it's a problem right now, but man, you talk about an up and in. Yeah, I don't think he can land this one on the green now, Johnny. I I mean, the grass so. is growing with him. That's the good thing. He had the upper hand on Tiger, what, for almost an hour now, Mark? He did. You know, you think about that 18th hole, both days he could have won the U.S. Open there. Nice. Couldn't get much spin coming out of there, so he's going to have to probably make a 20-footer. Nice That's a little splash coming out of there, Johnny. He not, splashed it nicely. Not the most difficult putt. What, it just breaks left maybe six, seven inches or something? Yeah, it's a hook putt, the kind he likes. And knowing Tiger, maybe that won't even be good enough. Well, you don't like to give Tiger openings too much. Um, he usually takes them, but... He'll probably cozy it up there with option to go in and uh, just let Rocco do his thing, knowing that it's probably a one and five putt under pressure. The balls are very close in distance, but uh, Mike Davis just pointed to Tiger, so he will go first. Same procedure, walk up about halfway, take a good look, get a feel for what the putt is doing in the middle. Importantly here, enough uphill, you have to put that in your formula right away, Roger. Well, the one thing he doesn't want to do is jam it by the hole for a few feet. Had a putt on a fairly similar line that didn't do much at all earlier uh, today. 
I think this is a little more left of that line and a little more up the hill. Might sneak back to the right, mightn't it? It could. Tension filled moments. My goodness. Well, if somehow this hole has the same score between the two players, it would be a minor miracle to go to the next one. to win now for Tiger. Hard enough. That one put him on his knees. Yeah, he wanted, he doesn't want any part of watching Rocco putt. Well, can Rocco do what Tiger's been doing to golfers now for years? Watch this reaction. Goes down, down. And Rocco saying, is it gonna go, is it gonna go? That's a great shot right there, isn't it? <laughs> Rocco and his caddy, Matt Ackett. He's still got another putt, Rocco. Well, he said at the start of the day, I cannot believe that I'm in position. I have a chance to win the U.S. Open Championship. And you know, Murph, running through his mind, we've talked about it all week long. He, in most likelihood, will never get another chance like this. He might, but in this arena with Tiger Woods, Probably not. It's a slow putt. Got to get it there, Rocco, for the United States Open. You got to get it there. This to stay alive in sudden death. And in one of the most remarkable performances of his career. Tiger Woods perseveres through Torrey Pines and wins a third U.S. Open championship. Two good buds there. Fourteen majors now for Tiger. Didn't look like he was going to win 45 minutes ago. The record is perfect. 14 of 14 when having at least to share the 54 hole lead. He had to go a little extra this time. But we watched more vintage Tiger Woods this week. Putts by the bucket full. Eagles grimacing, obviously in pain. Does this man love Torrey Pines or what? That's two wins here this year, and of course this one way bigger than the first. And the first player to ever win on the same golf course seven times. Let's get down to Mark Rolfing. Rocco, when you look back on today, what do you think you'll remember most about it? Hanging in there with this man. He's so hard to beat, obviously. I don't... When I throw three at him, he throws that little 300 mil of the ground. He's unreal, but... um. I, I'm fairly, I mean, obviously I would love to have won. And um, I, I don't know what else to say. It was, it was a great, it was a great day. I, they wanted to show they got one. I mean, I, three down through 10, I thought it was going to be over quick. And I just kept hanging around and he made a few mistakes and bang, 19 holes. Everywhere you walk today, you heard Rocco, Rocco, Rocco. How does that make you feel? It was unbelievable. I mean, they were just doing it now. And, um, yeah, it's, this is huge for me. This is, a, this is uh, the putt I made on 18, just to stay here again, I, I, I handled it. Uh, I was nervous as a cat, but I handled it. So um, who knows, maybe next time I'll go one better. Did it ever cross your mind at all that you might not have another chance like this, 18 holes with Tiger, yeah, oh, Monday sure. playoff? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, you know, I had the putt I had on 18 a, a few moments ago, I just said to myself, you waited your whole life for it, don't lag it. You know, just give it speed. And I just yanked it a touch, a little nervy, but um, 
I, I really can't really complain. I, I, I did the best I could. You didn't win the U.S. Open, but what will this week do for your career? Um, hopefully I, I get to play in it again and a few other things. and. Um, it just showed me that I still can compete, obviously, and I, I want to keep competing. Is that the most important thing you learned about yourself? Hold on. Hold on. I just don't, I never quit. I never quit, and I, I've been beaten down a few times and came back, and, and um, I, got, I got what I wanted. I got a chance to, to beat the, the best player in the world, and I, I came up just a touch short, but I, I think I had him a little scared at once, which was great. He just said, great fight to me, and that means the world right, right there. Congratulations, Rocco. Thank you. Dan? Well, here's what it means for his world ranking, Mark. He jumps 111 spots in those world rankings into the 47th spot. But that doesn't matter too much to Rocco. He wanted so desperately to win his favorite championship. And in the end, he succumbs to what everybody else has through the years. The greatest force to ever play this game. Tiger Woods keeps racking him up. 14 major titles. And now just the sixth player to win more than two U.S. Opens. And his wife, Elon, congratulated him, his uh, agent, Mark Steinberg. Camp Woods has had so much success. And we're going to hear from Tiger when we present him the trophy in just a moment. The king of Tory, Tiger Woods, making his way up for another look at Stevie's got the trophy there. Holds on to it for just a few seconds. Incredible dominance continues on this golf course. And incredible dominance in major championships. And there is little Sam Alexis, who will turn one in a couple of days. On Wednesday, the day after Father's Day, the first Father's Day that uh, Tigers enjoyed being a, a dad. And there is his mom, Coltita. The closest major championship that Tigers won to his hometown of Cypress, California. Winning his third U.S. Open in his home state. Little Sam's been dragging around some cut down clubs. Born the day after last year's final round when Tiger was battling the uh, to get into it at Oakmont. Hank Haney there, his swing coach. I think that's why winning here at Torrey Pines is gonna be right at the top of the list of all the great memories he's had because of all the family and the local flavor growing up here in Southern Cal. It's, uh, and the fact that he was up against the wall. Uh, Rocco put him up against the wall and said, I got gotcha. you. And he said, not quite yet. Tiger's so proud of her. He's, yeah, it's little Sam wants daddy. Come on, Tiger, take her out there. Maybe he'll take her out to the presentation. Tiger, in the past, has always kind of had Elon and Sam on the perimeter of the green. But little Sam wants to be right out there. He's got to go to the binky here. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. That's a nice okay, scene, isn't it? Torrey Pines has been Tiger's binky. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so dominant here. Safe haven for him. It'll be interesting to hear what Tiger says as far as where this major championship ranks, being in his hometown here and getting through the third surgery on that knee. There were times during this championship not a lot of people thought it might happen. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jim Vernon, President of the United States Golf Association. How about that? Please join me in welcoming our 108th U.S. Open champion, Tiger Woods.
Tiger, congratulations. Have you ever experienced a major championship with this kind of ups and downs, so volatile? No, um, it was uh, it was unbelievable. The whole week, um, the, the, the golf course was set up so fair, but also so difficult. Um, everyone who's come out to this week has been absolutely fantastic. The, the atmosphere is incredible. I mean, the fans here, um, they were, were made the tournament. And then um, today, today was just un unreal. I mean, honestly, that um, it just kept ebbing and flowing. You know, it, you know, Rock looked like he was in control. Now I thought I was in control, and he was back in control again. And it was back and forth, back and forth. And um, 90 holes wasn't enough. We had to, yep. you know, go one more. Walking away from 10 today, up by three, nothing's a sure thing, but you must have felt pretty confident, and that three-shot lead evaporated quickly. Yeah, it did. Um, you know, three shots uh, on, on this golf course isn't much, and you know, I, was, uh, I was playing a little military golf here, you know, so left and right, so um, I was kind of slapping it around, and uh, just I was just trying to get the ball on the green. I was, felt like I was putting so well, just get the ball on the green somehow, and I just had to struggle doing it, but... Um, you know, Rock just made you know three birdies right there in a row, right there on the trot, and it was uh, that hat trick was also one of the, one of the more impressive runs that uh, you can ever have on this golf course. Throughout the weekend, how much was the knee bothering you, and how much of a factor was it in this championship? I'm glad I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I, uh, I I I really don't feel like playing anymore. It, um, it's a, it's a bit sore and. Um, I, all I can say is uh, the atmosphere is what kept me going. You know, the, the tournament, being a major championship here at, at Torrey Pines, all the people. Um, you know, it, it could have been very easily. Um, I, I, I could never quit in front of these people. It was just, it, it wasn't going to happen. There have been not just so many victories, but so many extraordinary moments, kind of indelible moments, and there were several this weekend. What stands out in your mind? Oh God, you know, at um, <laughs> what did I make three doubles, three doubles or four doubles this week? Um, made three eagles. Um, count four doubles. Four doubles. Yeah, perfect. Even better. Uh, you know, it just it just was an unbelievable week. I mean, I, I the it was up and down, up and down all all, all week, and uh, you know, for 91 holes through all that, um, I finished 100 par. When do you plan to play again? Uh, not for a while. Not for a while. I'm gonna I'm gonna shut it down for a little bit here, and uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Two more quick things. A final thought about Rocco Mediate. A lot of guys have made a run at you. This is one of the gutsiest runs. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, <laughs> you know, Rock, and every, everyone knows Rock is such a, he's a great guy. And, you know, Rock has been just unbelievable, unbelievably nice to me and, and a great friend to me over the years, ever since my first year out here on tour. And to have him out here and, and you know don't forget I mean Rock was in, in bad shape last year his back was really bothering him and for him to be out here again at, at 45 and playing this well um, I can't wait five more years now he's, he's off to our tour and uh, <laughs> you know if he keeps playing like this uh, but no honestly uh, it was an unbelievable gutsy performance I mean he he played so well he put so much pressure on on me all all day today and he played well all week I mean he um, it was just a, a, it was a great battle uh, all day and uh, also a great friendship too. Last thing, the U.S. Open traditionally ends on Father's Day, in this case a day later, but this is the first U.S. Open you've experienced as a father. Your daughter Sam was born just shortly after last year's U.S. Open. She is here. How much of this she'll remember firsthand, we can't say. She's just a few days shy of her first birthday, but it has to matter that she was here. There's no doubt. Uh, it, you know, this is, you know, I remember here at, at Tory during um, the Buick, it was the first time she ever crawled, and now she's running around here. So um, it, uh, it, it means everything, and it, it really does. You know, to have, you know, I, I lost my dad a couple years ago, and I know how special it was for in, in 2002 for me to bring this home and um, talk to him about it and share it with him. Um, I can't do that anymore, but now I'm a father. I'm on the other side now, so uh, it, it, this couldn't have been. This is part of the, you know, the, the greatest tournament I've ever had. Congratulations, Tiger. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's go back to Dan Hicks. Thank you, Bob. And, uh, 
his very last comments, I think, kind of sum it up. The greatest championship he has ever had. I certainly think it is, uh, Johnny, when you roll up the knee surgery and everything else and the persevering and the, and the eagles and, and the tough starts to, to his first hole on every day. Where do, where do you rank this uh, championship for Tiger? Well, I mean, he's never played when he's this injured. I remember walking off that second tee uh, uh, yesterday, and it looked like and part of him wanted to say, let's pack it in. I don't need this anymore. I, I buckled almost to the ground. Um, you know, I want to win the Open, but this is too much. And I think the second part of him said is probably his dad. Remember, you're the toughest guy. Yep, and he proved it again. So the continued quest on Jack Nicholas continues. Tiger Woods with major championship victory number 14. Here was the list that was tacked on his wall not too far away in Cypress, California. And as we zoom in here, we can tell you that at age 32, Tiger is major victory number 14. And Jack didn't pick up the 14th major title until the age of 35. And then even a couple after that came with some years gap in between so tiger continues to be ahead of pace now four away from tying the great jack nicholas with 18 major championships what a week it's been the executive producers of nbc sports are dick ebersole and david neal the coordinating producer of nbc sports is sam flood today's telecast produced by tommy roy the telecast co-produced by Tom Randolph and directed by Doug Graber. Don't forget, beginning June 28th, Roger Federer, Maria Sharapova, and Rafael Nadal and tennis's best take to the famed grass courts of the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club, all vying for the most prestigious title in tennis. It's the championships, Wimbledon, coming your way at NBC. And then a lifetime of sacrifice comes down to this moment to make Olympic dreams come true. The U.S. Olympic trials coverage begins next weekend right here on NBC. What a week, so many images. Torrey Pines welcoming its first U.S. Open. Phil Mickelson took a run in the end. He couldn't win it in his own backyard. Tiger Woods came through the gates, through the June gloom, and ended up standing the tallest among this field of 156 that began the week. And don't forget to join us June 28th for the U.S. Women's Open Championship. Coverage begins June 28th from the Interlochen Country Club in Minnesota. For our entire NBC Golf Announce team, Dan Hicks saying so long from Torrey Pines Golf Course, where Tiger Woods shakes off the third knee surgery and Rocco Mediate to win his third U.S. Open championship. And as you heard Tiger say at the end, 14 major championships, all those wins worldwide, but the most special occurred at Torrey Pines this week. So long, everyone.